We celebrate the past. In the beginning was the music. Man invented the phonograph. Columbia double disc record. Music on both sides. Radio. Radio. This man-made phenomenon which rivals the very processes of nature itself. Radio can make 170 people conscious of a thing. Rock and roll, the definite dance beat has been re-established for the kids. Radio. Radio. The stunning advances. Culture and health in space. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Always reaching beyond. Provide information to people when it wasn't available before. Radio. Around the world, it's time for Live Aid. 16 hours of live music and aid of famine relief in Africa. Radio. Radio. Imagining an even more remarkable 21st century. Radio. Radio. You can stream it through your phone, your laptop, a way to listen to shows on demand. Radio. Radio. We celebrate the future. 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 Today. February 13th, live from the Marconi Museum, we celebrate World Radio Day, a global event and celebration of the importance and reach that radio has across countries and across barriers. Radio is a tool that gives people from many diverse backgrounds an outlet to have their voices heard. Radio changes lives, and radio brings people together. Over a century and a quarter old, radio is essential to everyday life. World Radio Day is an event organized by UNESCO for radio stations around the world. So happy World Radio Day, wherever you are. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. Welcome to World Radio Day 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're listening around the world. Welcome to a truly uh, global radio event, uh, World Radio Day 2020. We are live here this afternoon. Uh, from the home of radio itself, the Marconi Museum, outside of Bologna in Italy. And I must say, it is a particularly beautiful day today. The sun is shining. It feels like British summertime for me <laughs> out there. It's wonderful weather. We're delighted to be here. Uh, this is, uh, the next three hours, a moment of radio history. A celebration of 125 years since Marconi successfully had his wireless transmission experiments from this house that we are broadcasting from right here in 1895 uh, to the launch of today, a brand new radio station called Outside Radio, which is very, very exciting, that will be launched uh, in just a little over an hour's time. Uh, this is the place where radio began, uh, where it was eventually launched to the entire world. It's also World Radio Day. Uh, here and around the world, hundreds of radio stations are participating. And also, uh, this is an event uh, organized and run by UNESCO. We're thankful and grateful to UNESCO for recognizing and promoting this very special event here from the Marconi Museum in Italy. So we want to say thank you to UNESCO and thank everyone for listening to this broadcast. <laughs> so we have an exciting three hours, uh, an exciting historic three hours. But before we begin, let us introduce ourselves, starting with myself. I am your host. My name is Dr. Rob Quick. And as you can tell, I am not from Italy. I'm not from America. I'm originally from the United Kingdom. And uh, I live in New Jersey now. I work at William Patterson University as a professor there, also general manager of the radio station Brave New Radio. It is my pleasure to be here, and I brought a few people along with me. Uh, next to myself is a good man. Yes, uh, my name is Sebastian Escobar, and I am the station manager of Brave New Radio, the college radio station of William Patterson University in New Jersey. Uh, I've been in radio for many, many years, and this is an absolute honor to be at the home of, the, of where radio started here mm -hmm. in, in Bologna. And also, we brought along with us a student for a valuable learning experience. Alyssa B., would you like to say hello? Hi, I'm Alyssa. My radio DJ name is Alyssa B. Um, I'm a senior now at William Patterson. I'm majoring a double major in print and broadcast journalism with a minor in music. And like Sebastian said, it's an honor to be here, and I'm very excited to just be in the same room that radio was invented. And I must tell our audience, Alyssa has also discovered Italian pizza. Uh, yeah. Very delicious <laughs> food item. We've had a lot of it. Uh, we have a lot to, um, to cover in the next three hours, and I hope that you'll stay listening. It's going to be very exciting. Let me just introduce to you our kind host here today, because it is an honor and a privilege. And for myself, someone who has studied radio, grew up listening to radio, and reading about uh, Guillermo Marconi, to be in his house here at the museum is an honor and a privilege. And we are delighted to have the president of the Marconi Foundation here, um, Dr. Um, Corazzo, is that correct? Professor Corazzo, who's also a professor at the University of Bologna as well. 
So we want to welcome you to the, to the program and uh, give you uh, an opportunity to say a few words on this occasion. Thank you, Rob, and welcome to Bologna. Welcome to everyone. It's a pleasure and an honor for us to host uh, this uh, exciting event uh, to celebrate uh, the World Radio Day with uh, you and uh, a new launch uh, of Outside Radio. So uh, we're sure it's going to be an exciting three hours. And regarding Melissa and your discover, I would say that is not Italian pizza, it's pizza. There's no, <laughs> there's no need for anything else. That is right. Very true, very true. Um, yes, yeah, so do you have, um, you have a few remarks you'd like to share with us? Sure. Um, so you want me to get on with my introduction to Villa Griffone? So we are in this place uh, where uh, the Marconi Museum is really uh, placed. Is uh, the villa where uh, the Marconi family lived in the middle of the 19th century. And it is here then in 1895, so exactly 125 years ago, Marconi carried out his first experiments, uh, in, uh, first in the garden and then across the famous Celestini's Hill, demonstrating for the first time that uh, wireless uh, communications could propagate in non line of sight across up obstacles. And that is where uh, really he's shown, he's shown the power of this new media. And um, so we think that this is really the perfect place to celebrate the World Radio Day along with the brave new radio and outside radio. As you said, I'm also a professor at the University of Bologna where I teach in telecommunications, uh, communication theory and coding. And uh, let's say my research there is mainly on 5G, so the next generation of the cellular mobile communication standard. But uh, here with the University of Bologna and uh, Fondazione Marconi, we also founded uh, an institute for creativity. So inspired by the fact that Marconi is a great inventor, uh, we work on the ways in which the human brain uh, performs in order to generate ideas which are both original and effective. And I will tell you a little more about uh, the Marconi Institute for Creativity later. But uh, before we do that, let's go back to 2020. This year, uh, we have two anniversaries, exact, uh, not only the fact that we are uh, 125 years from the first experiment of non line of sight transmission, but also it's exactly 100 years since the first ever live entertainment radio broadcast organized by the Marconi company. So in 1920, um, they hired, let's say, a soprano, Nelly Mal Melba, which at the time was a great uh, prima donna. And uh, she uh, sang a repertoire from Chelmsford, which is the uh, site where the Marconi company was uh, placed in Essex. And uh, at the time, the Marconi company claim that uh, we have a famous prima donna into the microphone of a high power wireless telephone installation by means of which her voice is flung on the ether to hundreds of listeners scattered over Europe and the seas. Now hundreds of listeners today does not appear to be a lot, but of course at the time, we we're talking about 100 years ago, that was a great achievement. But today with you, uh, brand new radio and outside radio, we have the ambition of reaching hundreds of thousands or millions of people around the world uh, through the air and also through the internet. So things have changed. Uh, let me tell you a little more about the story. So Marconi was born in 1874. So this first experiment in 1895 was performed when he was uh, 21 years old. And so a very, very young uh, inventor working in the attic of this uh, villa where we are right now, which uh, was the room dedicated to uh, silks. So the, it was uh, the silkworm room. And there he was playing with uh, electromagnetic waves. Of course, he knew about uh, what Hertz had done, uh, showing that Maxwell was correct when he predicted that uh, electromagnetic waves could propagate. But uh, you might not know that Hertz said uh, that uh, this uh, game of electromagnetic wave propagation was very nice, but had no practical application. And of course, Marconi saw the practical applications and all of us now today live exploiting the propagation of uh, wireless. Uh, and so, of course, it's difficult to see the future. Um, let's say that uh, the main thing, as I said, was uh, passing the Celestinius Hill, which is uh, 1.5 miles um, from, uh, from the place where we are actually talking to you right now. And uh, he placed the receiver on the other side of the, of the hill. 
and that receiver was connected to a bell, and when the bell started to ring, the farmer that was there by the receiver shot a gun, and that was the moment when wireless communications and radio was actually born. Uh, after that, he went, moved to London, not because the Italian government did not want to fund Marconi, that is a myth that we need to dispel, but because he believed that London was the best place in uh, order to find investors from, for his uh, invention, or to patent an invention, and also build a new company. So one year later, let's say July 13, 1897, the first patent was granted to Marconi, and a few months later, he started the wireless telegraph and signal company. So Marconi is not only an inventor, but he is m maybe the greatest startupper or a, a young entrepreneur of the 20th century. Uh, the production started in 1898, so he was 24 years old. And uh, in 1899, when he was 25, he opened up a subsidiary in America. So it became a global company when he was 25. Uh, in 1900, he changed the name to Marconi Company. And um, still in the 1900, a very important uh, milestone is that uh, he opened a company in Belgium, in Brussels, uh, dedicated to maritime communications. And in that case, um, he was selling to the companies like, uh, let's say, big, big uh, boats, uh, transatlantic boats or going around the world, uh, not the equipment and not the people working on the equipment, but only the service. So the concept to sell service and not equipment is not new to the new companies that we have today who sell now service, uh, software as a service or platform as a service, but Marconi was doing that in the 1900. Uh, 1901 is a very important year, of course. That's when uh, Marconi crossed the Atlantic from uh, Cornwall to um, Newfoundland in, uh, in Canada, essentially. He was doing that in December. Of course, December in Canada is not very warm, and the winds are not soft, so his station, the receiving station, broke down. Uh, but uh, he was so determined that he used kites to keep up the antennas at the receiving station in place of uh, the trellises that uh, had uh, fall down, fallen down. Uh, he managed to do that, uh, notwithstanding the fact that uh, all the uh, scientists of the time had uh, declared clearly that that was impossible because nobody knew about the ionosphere at the time. Neither did Marconi, but Marconi believed in the fact that it was possible. So you need to believe that uh, even things that appear to be impossible can be done and uh, I would say that uh, what you're doing today with launching the outside radio experiment is also something that uh, somebody might say it's not possible, but yes, you are doing that. So you have to believe that. Just to complete a few uh, informa little information about uh, Marconi, the commercial service started in 1907, so he was now 33 years old, and break-even for his company was achieved the year after that. So the first 10 years of the Marconi company where he was not really making money and he reached that break even only 10 years after that. The first 10 years were large investments in experimental uh, communications around the world. Okay, so let me say that um, the heritage of Marconi has also been made concrete by uh, one of his daughters, Gioia Marconi, from his first marriage. She founded uh, the Marconi Society, and the Marconi Society every year gives an award. I know that also Brave New Radio received a Marconi Award, but this is a different one. This uh, Marconi Award is given to uh, fellows, scientists, and entrepreneurs that made a difference on the, let's say, legacy of Marconi. So, for example, in 1895, the award was given to Sir Cal, the inventor of optical fiber. In 86, to Leonard Kleinrock, the inventor of the internet. In 88, to Federico Fagin, the inventor of the microprocessor. In 1998, Vince Cerf, inventor of the TCP IP protocol. In 2002, to Sir Berners Lee, the inventor of the web, essentially the World Wide Web. In 2004, Page and Brin, Google. 2011, Jacobs, Qualcomm. 2013, Martin Cooper who was, the first, uh, was leading the first uh, development of the cellular telephone, and in 2016, to Brad Parkinson, uh, who was a 
major figure in the development of GPS. So all of these incredible achievements and incredible people are in the stream of legacy of what Marconi has done. Let me tell you, just close, in closing, a few things about uh, the Marconi Institute for Creativity. So this uh, initiative that we have to work on uh, innovation and to understand how companies and people and students can innovate. There are essentially two kinds of innovation that you can pursue. Incremental innovation, which is you take the state of the art and you do the next step according to the trends, which are maybe technological or social or political or economical, but essentially you are in continuity with the state of the art. But also you have visionary, visionary innovation, which uh, allows disruption and uh, jumps from where we are right now to the future. And since uh, sustainability of our planet implies that if we just continue to do what we're doing today in, uh, in an incremental fashion, we might hit a wall pretty soon. Uh, we believe that uh, this long-term vision and this ability that the human mind has to generate disruptions is essential for the future. Um, this is uh, something that we pursue in terms of uh, scientific research. We publish in journals like the Creativity Research Journal, Journal of Creative Behavior, Thinking Skills and Creati Creativity. So these are specialized journals for uh, this kind of topic. And uh, what we say to companies is that if you invest in creativity, you have multiple benefits. One is, of course, you can innovate your product and services portfolio, so that is the direct benefit. But also you contribute to what uh, the World Economic Forum calls the reskilling revolution. We need this revolution because there is a, a divarication right now between the competences of the human labor force and what uh, the industry will need in the near future. Uh, the third benefit that you have is that creativity leads to well-being and wellness. So happiness is increased through creative activity. Number four is the fact that uh, creativity in exploits and stimulates the plasticity of the brain. So we collaborate, for example, with a, an hospital in Milan that works on uh, events on the brain, like uh, losses of blood and so on. And if you engage in creativity in the first few days after the trauma, your chances to recover your abilities grow much higher. And finally, creativity reduces distances between diverse groups. Uh, there is a statistical evidence that if you engage in creative activity, your um, feeling between uh, yourself and others decreases because you are, allow yourself and train yourself to see the same uh, reality from different perspectives. So you can increase the integration and uh, reduce distances in society, never mentioning immigration, never men mentioning racism, never directly attacking those uh, topics, but simply working on creativity. So finally, all in all, creativity, we believe, is an essential feature of the human mind, which will become a necessity for our survival because we are demanding more and more of our cognitive abilities to artificial intelligence and the contribution of the human side with this, uh, let's say, artificial and biological collaboration between brains from our side will be to generate ideas which are creative. And I think that uh, what we're doing today together uh, is really a creative event and um, talking about diversity and uh, reducing distances between diverse groups. Of course, Outside Radio is an excellent example. So in closing, we are very excited to have you here. We're happy, of course, to answer any questions you might have. And uh, thanks again for being here. OK, so um, we want to hear from you. If you are listening to this very special broadcast, you can get involved. Elissa, how can people get involved and contact us? Go on Facebook and uh, uh, at Brave New Radio, or you can tweet us at Brave New Radio, and your questions, answers, comments, whatever you want to say, will get broadcasted from us. Obviously, the hashtag is World Radio Day, and obviously, the hashtag they're using this year for the theme is We Are Diversity Radio. Now, we're going to be interviewing you in a second, but before that, I just wanted to play something that we should have played a few seconds ago. So, uh, in, in America, Marconi is a hero. 
And uh, we had this recorded by uh, Dr. Leno Kelly, the Associate Director of the School of Communication at Grand Valley State University. He wanted to prepare this and play this for you, the Marconi intro. In his 63 years of life, Marconi would have ideas and create technology that would change the world forever. Marconi was an Italian inventor and electrical engineer, known for his pioneering work on long-distance radio transmission, development of Marconi's law, and the radio telegraph system. He is credited as the inventor of radio, and he shared the 1909 Nobel Prize in Physics with Carl Ferdinand Braun in recognition of their contributions to the development of wireless telegraphy. In the course of his remarkable life, Marconi was an entrepreneur, businessman, and founder of the Wireless Telegraph and Signal Company in the United Kingdom in 1897, which became the Marconi Company. He succeeded in making an engineering and commercial success of radio by innovating and building on the work of previous experimenters and physicists. His pioneering work in radio reverberates through history and still impacts millions of people around the world today, as radio is still a vitally important medium. In 2020, we celebrate the 125th anniversary of Marconi's first successful wireless transmissions from his home in Bologna, Italy. Today, February 13th, live from the Marconi Museum, we celebrate World Radio Day, a global event and celebration of the importance and reach that radio has across countries and across barriers. Radio is a tool that gives people from many diverse backgrounds an outlet to have their voices heard. Radio changes lives, and radio brings people together. Over a century and a quarter old, radio is essential to everyday life. World Radio Day is an event organized by UNESCO for radio stations around the world. So happy World Radio Day, wherever you are. Thank you very much indeed to Dr. Leno Kelly. And so now, Alyssa, um, this is not a graded assignment, by the way. You're not going to be graded as a student. Uh, has the privilege now of doing an interview uh, with you. Okay. Um, my first question is, how did you become president of the Marconi Foundation? Okay, the Marconi Foundation is under the control of a ministry here in Italy, Ministry of uh, Arts and Cultural Heritage. So it's um, an assignment that you receive from the minister, and it, uh, it is for a five-year, four years term. So I started in August last year, so my term will be the 2023. And kind of just going off that question, you said you were like picked. Um, how do they end up picking like the whole board of President, Vice President? Right, because this Marconi Institute for Creativity I told you about, uh, it's an initiative we started in 2011. So next year we will be celebrating the 10 years of that. So I've been involved in the foundation for many years now, and I guess that was probably the reason why they, they picked me. Okay. Can you get reelected, or is it just a one time thing? Yeah, you can be reelected for as long as you live. Okay. <laughs> Um, since it's 125 years since Marconi's first successful wireless connection, what is the Marconi Foundation doing to celebrate this? Oh, well, this is actually the first event in the, this year's um, program. In April, from the 23rd to the 25th, we have a Marconi Institute for Creativity Conference. In that conference, we will give uh, another award, another Marconi Creativity Award, to Isaac Goetz. Isaac Goetz is a very famous uh, economist writing books on uh, freedom and uh, entrepreneurship. And so Freedom Inc. is probably his most famous book. And this year he came out with um, the altruist uh, enterprise. And uh, he's, uh, he will receive uh, this award for uh, the fact that he writes in a disruptive way about economy in a way that is going to change probably the way that uh, entrepreneurs see the market. So this is going to happen in, the, in April, and April 25 is Marconi Day, because uh, that is the date when he was born. So every year, April 25 is a big day for us. In June, uh, we will try to reproduce uh, the concert that uh, was broadcast in 1920. So we will have a soprano sing the same repertoire. And uh, in October, we would like to do something which is uh, kind of a dream right now, but reproduce uh, the transmission across the Celestini's Hill. So using uh, the apparatus that you see around here, which are reproductions of Marconi first instruments, uh, repeat that experience uh, in October. So these, these are all in the program right now. 
Well, that sounds all very exciting. Um, just going back, you said there was going to be a soprano singing. Um, what song would that be that she would be performing? Uh, she, Nella, uh, she, she sang five uh, uh, pieces from different authors. Uh, it's not a song. Of course, it, it ends with the national, UK national anthem. Uh, there's Home Sweet Home at, at the beginning. And then there is uh, an air from, um, uh, let me think. So uh, ask, ask that again in a yeah. few minutes. <laughs> okay. um, next question is, uh, what personally drew you to, the Mar to Marconi and how does that kind of tie into your work at the University of Bologna since you teach there? So I teach at the Department of uh, Information Engineering, which is actually dedicated to Marconi. It's called the Marconi Department. Uh, so in that department, we have all the colleagues working on telecommunications, electronics, uh, automatic control, and um, I'd say that Marconi is the reference historical figure for that department. And uh, what I teach there is uh, coding theory, so the way in which, which you protect information in order to be able to travel longer and longer distances. And uh, if you think of Marconi, the story is really a conquer of longer and longer distances starting from the garden outside of this uh, villa, across hills, and then across the, the channel from France to England, and then across the Atlantic. So the conquer of longer and longer distances. So coding, which is a concept, of course, which Marconi did not have, but with, which came along with, um, essentially, with Claude Shannon after World War II, is really the way in which you can achieve the ultimate channel capacity and uh, close the link, as we say, with uh, very, very far away points, like, for example, satellites or uh, even uh, space probes. So right now, I don't know if you know, there's uh, space probes that have been launched in the 70s, like Voyager 1, Voyager 2. They are billions of kilometers away, and still we are able to receive data from them thanks to coding. So that is essentially what I teach. And, and you said privately to me that you uh, have the classes only for 50, 50 students. Um, how do those students get picked? Because that university, from when we were there yesterday, it's huge. Right, so let's say beyond uh, the courses on telecommunications, I also teach creativity and innovation, again, uh, stemming out from the Marconi Institute for Creativity work. And that is a class that, which is offered horizontally to the entire University of Bologna but with a limited number of uh, seats, which is 50. Of course, the number of students in Bologna is 80,000, so it's a very small percentage. And they are, these 50 are coming out of all of the schools. So you get students from engineering, from medicine, from philosophy, from science, and they all come together to work in a multidisciplinary way on the generation of ideas, which are both original and effective. Uh, learning about the fact that creativity is a talent, yes, but also an ability that you can develop, so you can understand the process, you can understand methodologies which do not limit your creativity but actually enhance it. For example, using methods like uh, metaphorical thinking, using uh, divergent thinking in uh, occasions where you start from a certain idea and you look for all possible alternative consequences, for problems that do not have a single answer, but multiple answers, so it's very difficult to grade for professors, but it's a totally dual uh, exercise with respect to problem solving. So creativity and problem solving are not the same thing. Okay. And um, since today is World Radio Day, how do you feel about the special broadcasts that we're doing where radio was invented? I think this is excellent, great. This is what we should do on every year on World Radio Day, but I don't know if it's going to be this great every year. Uh, I think it's just uh, the perfect celebration that we can have for t this day. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> um, lastly, what do you think Marconi would say if he saw all the work that kind of made radio get advanced, everything that since he was here alive, to everything that's happened after? Of course, uh, Marconi is uh, one element in a stream of uh, developments and inventions by the human species, which becomes, uh, I mean, started even before Homo sapiens. We are all part of a universal flux of ideas, and Marconi had a very special role, for sure. 
along with others, in the invention of radio. The, uh, it was unique in the fact that uh, he was able to see the real value and uh, to start companies that, was, um, that were able to exploit the, the commercial also value of the invention. And as I said, the Marconi Society celebrating all the invention of the internet, the invention of uh, uh, search engines like the Google engine, they are all in the stream of Marconi, and I think he, he would be very proud to see what happened after him. Uh, remember again that nobody uh, is in isolation, so he was part of this uh, overall development and uh, uh, exponential growth of our culture, which has uh, started essentially since uh, we appeared on Earth. And uh, as a matter of fact, in uh, cosmological vision, if we want to enlarge a little bit uh, uh, the discussion, uh, Alfred North uh, Whitehead, which uh, is the author of the Principia Mathematica, but also when he moved to Harvard at the end uh, of his life, uh, he became a professor of philosophy and he developed this process philosophy. He set out this cosmology in which uh, creativity and the let's say, generation of ideas that have value, like the ones that uh, Marconi generated, are the ultimate principle of metaphysics. So we are all part of this adventure in which we make our culture grow and we all give contributions. Some contributions are larger than others and for sure Marconi gave very, very large contributions. And I actually have one last question. Yes. What do you think Marconi would say if he was able to meet everyone from Brave New Radio and meet everyone from outside radio? Do you think he would have any advice to say or what, what do you think he would just in general say? He would say, keep going, believe in yourself, and don't worry about any obstacle that may come. If you believe strongly, you will succeed. Excellent. Thank you ever so much indeed, and thank you, Elissa, for doing that. Thank you so much. Uh, you are listening to World Radio Day. We're broadcasting live here in Italy, uh, the home of uh, Marconi. Uh, and actually, uh, because it is World Radio Day, we have heard for this program for many people around the world. So we have some greetings to play to you right now. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the power of radio. We're going on the air. This is World Radio Day. Radio stations across the globe unite to celebrate the most powerful medium. Radio is like where it's made. It very much influences whatever's going on. You are listening to World Radio Day. Hi, this is Tarek Chung of RTHK, Radio Television Hong Kong. I'm sending my support and greetings to the wonderful World Radio Day. As a media professional working in radio for 30 years, radio is part of my life, my work and my daily source of information and entertainment. For radio itself, after so many decades of development being competed by television, computer or new media, radio still survive and has a huge number of loyal supporters all over the world. I would say, Video and computer new media has never and will never kill the radio star. So continue to love radio. Happy World Radio Day. Cheers. Hello, everyone. This is Ari Haltonemi from Lim Radio, the Lab University of Applied Sciences in Lahti, Finland, speaking, wishing you all Happy World Radio Day. Let's keep this wonderful medium alive. Feliz Día Mundial de la Radio 2020. En este 13 de febrero, en el que celebramos la diversidad, lo hacemos también con distintos idiomas. Desde el norte de España, recibid un saludo de Radio Universidad de Navarra. Hello from Wired FM in Limerick City, in Ireland. Entertaining and empowering the students of Limerick for nearly 25 years. We are Diversity Radio. We are College Radio. Happy World Radio Day! Hello, this is Lance Ligas from UTA Radio at the University of Texas at Arlington. Marconi was right when he said thought itself will be transmitted by radio. My staff and I are proud to support World Radio Day. Hi, my name is Eva Gustafsson. I'm the president of World College Radio Day. Radio is the perfect media for gathering people throughout the world. Listening to each other's stories and sharing experiences brings us closer together. From me in Gothenburg, Sweden, and from the World College Radio Day team throughout the world, we wish you a happy World Radio Day. On February the 13th, live from Villa Griffone, the home of Guglielmo Marconi, even Italy joins the celebrations for World Radio Day 2020, un evento speciale per raccontare la radio e celebrare insieme la diversità e la pluralità. 
Hello everyone, I'm Rossella from Radiophonica, a college radio based in Italy, part of World College Radio Day and also of the Italian network of college radio, Raduni. Today we celebrate World Radio Day 2020. College radios across the world all together say in different languages, we are Diversity Radio. La radio è un fantastico mezzo di comunicazione per celebrare l'umanità in tutta la sua diversità ed è inoltre una piattaforma in cui si può sviluppare un discorso pluralista e democratico e questo è vero anche, forse in modo specifico, per le radio universitarie e studentesche. Proprio in occasione della giornata mondiale della radio, l'UNESCO ha invitato le stazioni radio di tutto il mondo a sostenere la diversità intesa come pluralismo radiofonico, ma anche come capacità di dare voce ai diversi gruppi sociali che vivono e convivono in un territorio. Ma la radio è molto di più, e noi lo sappiamo bene, perché promuove la varietà di contenuti editoriali e ovviamente anche musicali. Greetings from Italy for World Radio Day 2020. You are listening to World Radio Day and a very special broadcast from the Marconi Museum in Bologna, Italy. Welcome back to, of course, the house where radio was born, uh, the Marconi House. And actually, coming up still in this very, very special broadcast for World Radio Day, here's what we have to come. Coming up in a little over 23, 24 minutes' time, we have the launch of Outside Radio, a brand new radio station here. And it's going to be a very special event. And it's appropriate that it actually is launched here, the home of radio, where radio was created. And also, we have an interview with Elettra Marconi, Marconi's uh, surviving daughter, that was recorded by Outside Radio. So there's a lot to stay tuned for, um, very historic. But right now, uh, as we are in the Marconi Museum, I think it's entirely appropriate to look around us and see that uh, even though it's radio and you can't see what we're seeing, we're in this fantastic room full of many of Marconi's early inventions that were just demonstrated to us before we went on the air. Mm -hmm. Quite uh, Literally, sparks were flying, electricity was flowing. It was the magic and power of radio. And to take us down more into the, uh, the history of this is Sebastian Escobar. Thank you, Rob. Okay, so sitting next to me is Barbara Balotti. And, ba and Barbara, she's the director of the Marconi Museum and one of the most preeminent Marconi scholars and experts. So, Barbara, grazie per essere stato con noi oggi. Grazie a voi. Thank All right. you. That's enough Italian for me before I make a fool out of That's myself. That's right. <laughs> uh, Barbara, so please tell us, how did you first get involved with the Marconi Museum? Um, after I wrote my dissertation at the University of Bologna, Milan Marconi, I actually went to the U.S. Uh, um, at the university there, but then uh, a new project started here, the project of the Marconi Museum the way it is today, and I was uh, contacted, and uh, actually I was, I have to say, very privileged, because obviously uh, what I had uh, learned uh, through a lot of investi historical investigation uh, could really be put uh, uh, and displayed for everybody in a project that obviously in, in which obviously I was not uh, the only one, there was obviously <coughs> the first president of the Marconi Foundation, a, a great technician, uh, designers, uh, but mm -hmm. uh, I gave my historical contribution uh, to, the, to, to what the Marconi Museum uh, has become today and is today. So what is it about Mr. Guglielmo Marconi that fascinates you so much? Well, I think uh, how, what, um, like the age um, which he started, uh, the fact that he com uh, and that was, was at, at 20, 20, 21, wow. and then 27, the, the, the transatlantic experiment, which was really something mm -hmm. huge, uh, and uh, much more. And the fact that uh, there was such a combination of different elements uh, in this uh, Mm, in this guy that I had known through his notebooks uh, when he was young, through his in a family background, and um, uh, the fact that he, then he became uh, uh, obviously such a skilled uh, inventor and experimenter, but also, also as obviously we, we know, uh, a businessman, the entrepreneur, and uh, the fact that he continued to em envision the future of radio communications for such a long career, I think, these are really very brilliant aspects, uh, and just, just to mention one of the many definitions I've read uh, on, on Marconi, uh, about Marconi, I think that the fact that he was, he was really the first uh, technological inno innovator of the 19th century, and he started from here, 2021, and I said in over six years he was the pioneer of this radio communication, um, 
really a fascinating, a fascinating character. Absolutely. And I'm sure he would be astounded to see how radio has grown since then. Now we can stream live from our phones. Uh, so are you still learning things about, about Marconi that, you know, you still, maybe you haven't learned about before that you're still learning today? It's amazing, but it, it, yes, yes, I, yes, I am. Yes, we are because uh, every new topic, every new um, experiment or anniversary we celebrate ever new um, some I mean we continue to discover something new uh, because his, uh, um, his activity was not so long in time but also every almost everywhere in the world and uh, right. so every time you open up a new subject a new situation new all the past event uh, new historical research is really worth doing and gives us really very precious information and and always very interesting. Absolutely. Can you give an, uh, an example of something recent that you learned about him? Uh, well, for example, the way, for sure, the way, um, how can, uh, uh, the way he was linked to broadcasting, I think it is really uh, mm. fascinating. And at the same time, as can I say, I, as I showed you yesterday night right, yes. uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the tour here at the, at the Marconi Museum, in the afternoon actually, um, you, you heard uh, an, an excerpt of, uh, um, of his radio speech in March of March 1937, and you know that then he died in July 1937, after right. 40 years of career, uh, he celebrated broadcasting, but he saw uh, the future in a way, because uh, yeah, as you certainly uh, remember, he points out that point-to-point uh, uh, -point communication was really um, the future of radio communication. Obviously, uh, it's much more complicated, but at the same time, the fact that uh, um, even at the end of, toward the end of his career and of his life, uh, he continued to be such a visionary, really struck us, and uh, we are really trying to uh, understand better um, elements of the later part of, of his career, for example. Absolutely, and, and you know, there's a lot of things that I didn't know about Mr. Marconi, I'm sure. Uh, students around the world are, are interested in learning about. You know, he was really a pioneer of radio engineering. Um, and one thing that I learned yesterday was his invention was used on the Titanic. Now that was news to me. I'm sure to everybody else that was like, well, of course. But that was news to me. So, you know, that was pretty amazing. So what are some other like misunderstandings that people may have about Marconi? Um, well, for sure, the myth that um, he, he, I, I think that really a lot of people think that uh, he presented his invention to the Italian ministry at the time, uh, let's say telecommunication ministry, it had another name, right, right. Uh, to the Italian and, government, uh, to the Italian government, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, then uh, um, uh, they didn't they didn't realize how how, pow how powerful and promising the, the promising this invention could be, and so he was forced to poor uh, poor guy to move mm. to England. This is completely a myth and we found that out uh, the, um, during those investigations I was mentioning uh, before. And uh, for example, I think this gives uh, uh, a new perspective uh, because the fact that uh, not only he had made this invention at 21, uh, but that the, with his family he decided to move to England and they knew somehow not only they knew that probably that was the best place for sure, actually, uh, at the time in which to present this invention, but the, the way they behaved there, all the right steps they, 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 had, they were able to take, um, I think this is really, for example, really interesting, and op this opens up um, a new um, context in which he developed this invention, because right. again, there, was, there were inventions, but all what he did to develop his inventions uh, was probably as fascinating as the way he um, had great ideas and great and did made great experiments. Right. Yeah. Something you mentioned yesterday was that uh, the Italian government thought that his invention was going to be used for 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 bad for war. It was going to is going to be something dangerous. Um, is that at all true? No. I, I don't know, for sure, uh, for sure, ministers of war uh, in Italy, in England, uh, and, uh, and in other countries um, obviously saw this possible application also uh, in war. But I, let me mention that I think that the way Marconi always stressed how um, this new instrument could uh, uh, help uh, um, peace right. uh, among people around the world, how um, this was 
so important. I think this is really um, something to, to stress. Uh, also today, 125 years later, I think it is still very, very interesting to Absolutely. Think. And now we realize his invention just created point-to-point -point communication around the world and has completely innovated the way that we communicate with people. Now, he's, uh, he's a visionary. He's a great visionary. Absolutely. A great visionary of his time. Who is someone that, that you would consider a great visionary today, someone today, that you, maybe you would say, well, he's, he or she has the potential to be a great visionary? Today, this is so difficult. Can I say what I hope? I hope that some scientists uh, or uh, physician, but I, I, I think uh, I really would like to see very visionary scientists uh, that work, uh, let's say, for the environment, for all the problems we have with the environment, because mm. uh, we have to be def definitely, uh, we need to imagine a new world with different characteristics, otherwise I don't know which planet uh, we will have in a in a very short period. In a very couple of years, absolutely right. Uh, well, Barbara, thank you so much. Thank you to you. Let me say, let me say that I think uh, uh, that Guido Marconi would be so happy that uh, someone of your age, of his age at the time, uh, was here like uh, in, tw in 2020, 125 years after his, in his first experiments here uh, to host this great event. And I thank you all so much uh, for in, for deciding to be here today. Thank you. Grazie. È stato un piacere. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the power of radio. We're going on air. This is World Radio Day. Radio stations across the globe unite to celebrate the most powerful medium. The radio is like where it's meant. It very much influences whatever's going on. You are listening to World Radio Day. Welcome back to World Radio Day 2020, live from Italy. I'm Rob Quick, and I'm joined here with, with, with Sebastian Escobar. Might I add, this is uh, El Bellissimo Paese, the beautiful country of Italia. It is beautiful. Yes. And we've actually been very fortunate with the weather. The sun has been shining all week. And Alyssa, how can people get in touch with us on social media? And has there been any interaction yet? Yes, we actually have one new tweet, and you can, if you want, you can message us on Twitter using just add us at Brave New Radio, or Facebook, just mention us at Brave New Radio, and your message, question, whatever you want to say, will get broadcasted live from Italy. And actually, right now, we have a very special one, our first message ever, which is coming from Twitter, and that is uh, from Julia Lauren at Hey... It's Julia. It's super exciting that Brave New Radio is broadcasting from Italy for World Radio Day. Thank you, Julia, and thanks for tuning in because she uh, also commented saying she's listening now from um, GoBrave.org. So Excellent. thank you. Fantastic. Well, keep those uh, social media comments coming. Coming yes. in just a few minutes, we have the launch of Outside Radio. But before that, we do have an interview with a nephew of Adelmo uh, Landini, Marconi's assistant, who can take us back in time to what happened in 1895. Yes, and uh, the name of the nephew is Leonardo Lacava. Thank you very much. Welcome back from Outside Radio. We are here with Leonardo Lacava, the nephew of Adelmo Landini. Okay, so For the one of you who may don't know yeah. this, Marconi's assistant. Good morning. First of all, thank you for taking the time to meet us. We appreciate it. Now let's talk about Adelmo Landini, who was, uh, as we know, Marconi's assistant. His experience with wireless transmission it was already clear during the First World War. Indeed, he served the Italian Army in the Telegraph's engineers. How did Landini have the opportunity to work with Marconi back then? Okay, uh, let me thank you very much indeed for the opportunity to uh, better know my special Great uncle, Adelmo Landini, that we usually call only uncle, not great uncle, to be honest, due to the fact that we are very, very, very close. He was the brother of my grandfather, and um, my uncle, coming to your question, as you told, uh, took part the, to the First uh, World War as a telegraphist, uh, but maybe you don't know that uh, he got a lot of decoration due to the, his uh, technical skills, uh, but uh, mainly for his uh, courage. To well understand uh, the story and understand why Mr. Guglielmo Marconi 
choose my uncle, it's necessary to have uh, some uh, very, very short information reg regarding the environment uh, in which uh, he grew up. As you know, uh, his father worked uh, as a gardener in Villa Griffone, the residence of uh, Guglielmo Marconi, and uh, since uh, he was a child, my uncle was very, very interested in technical studies. And uh, so he got uh, a degree at Aldini Valeriani Institute, a very respected technical high school. And uh, maybe it's interesting to take note that uh, not many boys could attend school at that time. But uh, his parents uh, believed very much into education. You know that uh, my uncle in 1920 got the international certificate as a radio telegraphist, and uh, on uh, 1927, Guglielmo Marconi needed an assistant due to the fact that uh, he had created a, a sort of physical uh, laboratory into a yacht, his name is uh, Rose Electra. Now Electra has a very bad end, let me say, because it's under the sea. Anyway, so Marconi was looking for um, the best uh, radio telegraphist in Italy. At that time, only 400 uh, uh, radio telegraphists uh, were available. So, coming to the question, why Adel Molandini? That was the youngest of the 400 telegraphists. First of all, for his skills. And, uh, to be more clear, for his um, aptitude to study, to research, to develop. Second, for his uh, laboratory's experience made during the war into the Italian army. Third, for his very, very, very high determination, shown uh, every time and in every situation. These were the three key factors that moved Marconi to choose the young Landini. Do you have any written memories of your uncle? What can you tell us about his relationship uh, with Marconi? Uh, well, I have uh, many, many memories indeed. I conserve uh, several things regarding my uncle. Let me say I am the collection point of the family. For example, I have a lot uh, of articles uh, he wrote uh, for national newspapers or uh, articles uh, written on him uh, about uh, his discoveries uh, or his uh, relationship uh, with Marconi and so on. I have um, also an interesting script uh, written by him. The title is uh, Marconi SOS on Atlantic Ocean, and it, 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 uh, it tells uh, the story of the life uh, of his master. And uh, I keep a, a lot of photos with Marconi and other colleagues. I have um, several international patents regarding uh, physical and mechanical matters. If you want, I can uh, read uh, some of them, but I warn you that they are absolutely not understandable for normal people, uh, if you're not uh, <laughs> physicists. Anyway, for example, three carburetor to increase performances of an internal combustion engine through ozonized air or method and machine to extract atmospheric oxygen mixed in the water to improve combustion and uh, human breathing, or propulsive reactor with the recovery of exhaust steam and gas powered by a nuclear reactor that are suited to interplanetary and interstellar navigations. So as you can understand, he was uh, mainly a physicist with a huge practical experience, due also to his relationship with Marconi. But not only. You have to know that he had the opportunity to meet um, and sometimes to work also with important uh, scientists uh, as Enrico Fermi or Thomas Edison. He met also entrepreneurs as uh, David Sarno, the managing director and the co-founder of RKO, partner of the World Disney Corporation, of, of course. Um, so he met also some uh, important uh, politicians as uh, King of Italy, Vittorio Emanuele III, or King of uh, Great Britain, George Fa. He had uh, also a very emotional encounter with, with the Pope. Did your uncle Adelmo feel any pressure working side by side with Marconi in his projects? Landini was used to see Mr. Guglielmo Marconi, of course, because of the job of his father, but of course uh, only from distance, because he was only the son of a gardener, you know, <laughs> so he could have a uh, meeting so close. The first time uh, that my uncle met Guglielmo uh, Marconi and speak uh, to him was uh, in uh, 1905 when Guglielmo 
Marconi came back to his uh, family house and uh, Mr. Marconi was a man very, very kind, asked uh, to my uncle about uh, what he wanted to be when he should grow. And uh, my uncle answered, I want to become as you are. We are speaking of a child who was only eight years old. I think that it's important to underline that since uh, my uncle was eight years, he had already a target, and he never, never gave up it. Anyway, Mr. Marconi answered to my uncle, you have to study, but mainly you have to conserve your passion, and you never must be discouraged. My uncle traveled a lot as a radio telegraphist on board of the biggest ocean liners at that time, and he was in Northern and Southern America, as the United States, Canada, Argentina, Venezuela, Brazil, in Asia, China, India, Japan, and so on, meeting many, many different people, different views, totally different culture. And it influenced a lot his sensibility and his behavior all along his life. Is there anyone in your family who decided to follow in Adelmo's footsteps? Uh, on a strict point of view, we haven't uh, any physicists in our family. On the other side, I can say that uh, the spirit to observe, to research and experiment maybe has been transmitted, for instance, to me. I'm a sociologist and uh, I like so much to know the behavior of people living or working together. And I like to go always deep, just as my uncle, even if into the social and not uh, physical phenomena, of course. And uh, not only, uh, due to my job, I had to travel a lot all over the world, just like my uncle, and uh, I have the same opportunities to meet different people, different cultures, visiting, visiting different places. And what I can affirm is that the travel opens your mind and helps you to understand people and maybe the life. Uh, last but not least uh, question. Would you consider Adelmo Landini an outsider? Uh, well, it's uh, a very exciting question. On my point of view, my uncle was a clear example of outsider. First, you have to take into account uh, the condition of the countryside and uh, Italian in a poor Italian province during the first years of the last century. And uh, you have immediately the picture of the typical life of a child at that time. You had to fight to get food, no public transport, no health system, only a few schools were far away from your house. And you have the possibility to reach them only walking, walking, and walking. No water, never toilet at home, no telephone. You could communicate only meeting people, so you can communicate, you could communicate only with people around you, around your, your house, your farm. The main part of people couldn't have an education, and few people were able to speak Italian. And often, the dialect was the only language spoken. So, it was totally crazy, only to think to be able to become a physicist. Really crazy. But it happened. The son of a gardener became a physicist, working with the Nobel Prize William, Mr. William Marconi. Sure, my uncle was aimed by a strong spirit of the research, and in the same time, he wanted to travel, to meet people, to visit the world. He felt in the beginning as a citizen of the world, even if he knew only the country sound around the house. So the question is, how could it happen? He tackled with great determination any experience that the life offered him, even if it was really heavy or dangerous. Going, for instance, the army during the war in order to increase his skills as telegraphist. And after fighting in a very strong way to be recruited by Marconi, it was not easy, of course, on the Electra. And we have to remember that he was the younger telegraphist, and so on. So he fight. He fight, and he was very determined. In other words, he got uh, involved into all his life. Maybe the secret of his success as outsider was into the center that he repeated me several times. Leonardo, never give up. Never give up. Thank you. You are listening to World Radio Day from the Marconi Museum in Bologna, Italy. 
We celebrate the past. In the beginning was the music. Man invented the phonograph. Columbia Double Disc Record. Music on both sides. Radio. Radio. This man-made phenomenon which rivals the very processes of nature itself. Radio can make 170 people conscious of a thing. Rock and roll. The definite dance beat has been reestablished for the kids. The stunning advances, culture and health in space. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Always reaching beyond. Provide information to people when it wasn't available before. Radio. Around the world, it's time for Live Aid. 16 hours of live music and aid of famine relief in Africa. Radio. Radio. Imagining an even more remarkable 21st century. Radio. Radio. You can stream it through your phone, your laptop, a way to listen to shows on demand. Radio. Radio. We celebrate the future. 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 Today, February 13th, live from the Marconi Museum, we celebrate World Radio Day, a global event and celebration of the importance and reach that radio has across countries and across barriers. Radio is a tool that gives people from many diverse backgrounds an outlet to have their voices heard. Radio changes lives, and radio brings people together. Over a century and a quarter old, radio is essential to everyday life. World Radio Day is an event organized by UNESCO for radio radio stations around the world. So happy World Radio Day, wherever you are. Welcome back to World Radio Day 2020, and we're broadcasting live here in the Marconi Museum just outside of Bologna in Italy. And let me just say before we continue a couple of things, uh, I want to give a special shout out to OWWR, uh, SUNY College at Old Westbury, who are taking this entire program live. Thank you very much. WMSC and Montclair State University, let's give them a round of applause. Well, good guys also taking the program. I'd like to say hello to WLOY, uh, WZND as well. Uh, Alyssa, do we have any uh, tweets on social media? Yes, we do. We got a few, actually. Um, our first one is coming from G-Man, all the way from Monmouth County, New Jersey. He was asking if we could play some Italian progressive rock, but unfortunately, we don't have the rights to the music, so we can't play it, but he's still listening, so I thanks. thought it was nice. Yeah, I thought it was nice. <laughs> So uh, thank you for tweeting that. And um, we have one more coming from uh, at Jamie, uh, Jamie Sharp. Uh, she says, I can't wait to hear Brave New Radio make school history by broadcasting live from Italy. She was also a student at William Patterson. So thank you for tweeting in. Again, you can tweet us at Brave New Radio or Facebook on um, just add us at Facebook, um, add us at Brave New Radio on Facebook. And actually, Really quick, we just got a brand new one from Zay at Zay Zay uh, at Brave New Radio K at C S U F M is also taking the program live. Happy World Radio Day! Thank you, awesome. Zay. Yeah, awesome. Great. Great. So, so exciting. So we're just going to play you. It's very short. It's about one minute forty-one seconds. The report from the Hill of the first Marconi experiment, and then we will have a very special person indeed. Grazie della linea, ci troviamo in via Celestini a Pontecchio Mar Okay, we'll come back to that, we'll come back to that, we're trying to find that audio. But actually, let me now introduce, we have a very special person who actually we owe a great deal to, um, because we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this person, and um, he is uh, becoming a good friend. Um, Mr. Alberto Lenzi, please, round of applause. Hi, Hi everybody, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, um, so uh, I, uh, we do want to play something because uh, a person isn't with us today and she's been very important in this story. Um, and it's a person that, um, well, we'll tell the whole story. But uh, Bridget Charlton is a student of ours at William Patterson University. She's actually graduating in just a few months. So she's getting ready to do that back in New Jersey. But um, this whole story is a remarkable story. And we'll get into it in a second. But she put together something, she couldn't be with us today, but Bridget put together something that she wanted you to hear about how this all began. So this is Bridget Charlton.
Hello, World Radio Day. My name is Bridget Charlton, and I am the music director of the United States of America's number one college and non-commercial radio station, Brave New Radio. While my goal is to work as a speech-language pathologist rather than in communications, radio has been such an important part of my college career, and in turn, my life. It has helped me cope with the stressors of college life, work with my community, and most importantly, help me find and strengthen my voice. Today, I am proud to tell you that for many of the same reasons, I have helped radio you become an important part of someone else's life as well. Giovanni Lenzi. This summer, I was given a beautiful opportunity to combine these two fields by teaching two summer radio courses for students ages 11 to 19. Throughout a week of training, my classes were prepared to broadcast an original, live, hour-long program. While nearly half of my first class was composed of international students, it didn't come yeah, yeah, close yeah. to preparing me for what came next. My second class was only a third the size of my first, just six students. <laughs> However, all of them were from Italy, and I was told that one in particular, Giovanni, may not be able to stay. I was confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? If a student wants to take a class, they should be able to, regardless of what difficulties they may have. It's my job as the educator to help them. They told me it wasn't that simple. Giovanni has autism. As a speech pathologist in training and also a strong advocate for this community, I was not dismayed by this prospect. Instead, we threw ourselves right into the class. Giovanni was an eager student and offered a fresh perspective on familiar songs that perhaps we've taken for granted. I think that uh, could sign and exclude and exploding uh, people based on physical and mental difference is totally wrong because, uh, like Lennon say, people should uh, love each other and not uh, describe someone only based on wrong stereotypes. I didn't realize in that moment how important this show would be. I was just excited that my students had fun and were able to learn a new skill. In late September, however, I received an email from the Lindsay's longtime friend and agent, Guido. He asked if I had time to meet with them to discuss a possible sisterhood between Brave New Radio and a station that they wanted to build. So now, on this World Radio Day 2020, we celebrate the 125th anniversary of radio as well as the birth of a brand new prospect, Outside Radio. The station created by Giovanni and his family will serve as a platform for individuals with autism to express themselves. When I decided that I wanted to become a speech-language pathologist, my mission was to open the doors of communication to my patients. But because of Brave New Radio and Outside Radio, I've been able to help do so much more. Now, not only will Giovanni and people like him have a voice, they will have a place that they are heard. This is why we are Brave New Radio, and why they are Outside Radio. My name is Bridget Charlton, and this is World Radio Day 2020. Phenomenal. And speaking of Bridget, she just sent us a, a personal message, and she says, Buongiorno World Radio Day, or I guess in our case, Bon pomeriggio. Uh, you guys sound fantastic, and it's so, it's so exciting to be able to tune in to such a historic broadcast. Congratulations to Braven Radio. Thank you to the Marconi Museum, and good luck to my friends at Outside Radio. Wish I could be there. Thank you, Bridget. So, I'm here. I'm so excited. I'm Alberto Lenzi, and uh, we talk a lot about uh, the ex- extraordinary scientific things about science, about uh, radio application. We talk about the future, what will could be happen in the future. Mm-hmm in a scientific way. I'm first of all a parent. I just want to speak about imagination, friendship, and hope. Um, When uh, everything, all the things that we we are doing now happen, like Bridget said, and uh, I must thank her and Sebastian and you. It uh, happened last August when Giovanni went to William Patterson University for a normal course of, of English that he loved a lot. When he was there, he had the opportunity to broadcast at your radio. For him, 
was not so easy to do with this, because he's shy, because uh, a guy with a special needs. After that 15 days, he was able to manage one hour of broadcasting at your brave new radio. He came back full of self-consciousness. He was so happy because he has done a very important thing that he never done in his life. And so when uh, we were together, I tried to, to imagine, this is imagination, to, to imagine that uh, why we cannot do um, a radio, a web radio, but I never know in, in which way. But uh, I, I knew that it was very important to find a way to explain that it's possible to do something different. So I came back to William Patterson University and I, I, I have the, the opportunity to know you, Rob, and all your team, fantastic team. And when I ask to you, why don't you want, can you stay with us in this uh, new adventure? You are the very important radio. You are a, a very prized radio. Um, we are just, we born today. Me and the other guys that are around me that they thank a lot for, for this. And you say to me, Yes, I will stay with you. We stay together. You, you will become a sister radio. Your name is Brave New Radio, and you were so brave to accept this. And we are so proud to be with you. Can I say? <laughs> Nothing more. Um, well, we, let us say the honor's ours. We would not be here if it were not for you and your son. Giovanni, let's give a round of applause to Giovanni. Giovanni. And so, Outside Radio. So, how did you come up with the name of Outside Radio? Yeah, because uh, we are outsider. We are not the uh, perfect guys. We know, we know. <laughs> but uh, we, have, uh, we hope to be. Something, someone that in the future could win something. And we win if um, some other will come to, with us in, your, in uh, our path to give the possibility to the people to believe that it's possible to see the thing in a different way. This is important for the mankind. We, have the, we must be brave to have uh, the curiosity to see, to, to search the dark side of the moon that is not necessarily a bad place to where we stay. Dark side of the moon, yep, I know that, I know that lyric well. Um, let me talk to you about this, though, because it's more than just Giovanni now. We have other people here outside yeah. radio. How do you guys feel about outside radio? Yeah, we, we are really excited about it. And we thank you again uh, for accepting us and doing this with us. Uh, it's really important for us. And also this project uh, means a lot for us, for uh, Alberto, for Giovanni, for everyone, because uh, we established a great, uh, a great uh, friendship in this year. And uh, we want just uh, the other people to understand and to see what we actually see uh, when uh, we are uh, with Giovanni mm -hmm. and uh, we, we just want people to see things uh, from a different point of view. Absolutely. And so do we, we have a, um, the answer of Giovanni for the presentation? Absolutely. So Giovanni has actually recorded something to play for us right now. Let's hear that. Hi everybody. I am Giovanni Lenzi. Last summer, I went to William Patterson University and for the first time I spoke on radio and my dream came true. 
At the beginning, I was nervous and excited, but I told myself not to be afraid. I found the courage and I put all my heart and soul into it. It was fun and I enjoyed myself a lot. I wasn't alone because my friend Bridget told me what to do. She told me to articulate my words and to speak loud and clear. She gave me headphones and let me talk on the microphone. I talked about the movie The Lion King. I read the water forecast and I chose the two Beatles song to broadcast on the radio. It was an unforgettable experience. Because of this, my father helped me to create a partnership with William Partners University and a brave new radio to enable me to continue broadcasting. So, I am very happy to be here with you and to broadcast together. So, Alberto, let me ask you, so when you hear that, you hear your son talking, how do you feel? Oh, I can imagine. You can imagine. Because uh, the first thing is that uh, uh, a father, a mother, a parent has, when uh, you have a guy like Giovanni, is uh, to be alone. Loneliness was for a long time the only friend. Giovanni has... Uh, The, uh, the, the possibility to have some friends now. Mm. that are the friends that are coming from the same school. They love him. They stay with him. And they decided to stay in our radio. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy for them. Because uh, I'm sure that after this experience, they will begin better men. Very men with a lot of a lot of things inside of, of them. I'm sure about this. Um, you, you can be, you, sometimes you, you, you can have the, the feeling to be fragile, but it's not so. You must be very strong and brave to accept all this. Thank you. Well, thank you. And just to let you know, so we've been here a couple of days in Italy and Bologna. And we did visit the studio space of Outside Radio, which is fantastic. And, yeah. Uh, can you t tell us about the studio? And, sure. And how it's going to be used? Um, nothing could be, can be possible if another friend of us, Andrea, that is uh, the chief manager of a theater in San Lazzaro di Savena, a little town close to Bologna, for all, for all uh, his life, He, he spent his life to try to put together uh, guys with special needs and the other. Trying to create a, a um, theater player, it, very, very sensitive. So, so I, cannot, I cannot find the real, the real word because when you see, a, when I, you see all these guys, these different guys on stage, the emotion is so strong. It, it feels that it's not important what you are watching, but uh, what is possible to create if you believe in things. And uh, I want to say thank you to Andrea. I also to say thank you to other person that are here and that uh, help me to, for example, one of them to, to try the, the way to be in connection immediately with you. That is my friend over there, my friend Guido. He lives in New York and he stayed with me for the first step when we, we came together to you. And uh, I want to say thank you to my friend Vincenzo that introduced me to the president of the uh, from Marconi Foundation. And I want to thank the president of the Marconi Foundation because he was a, a man that he understand very well, in the story, very well what was the, the, um, the feeling of the, of the things that we are doing all together. 
And it is uh, fantastic to see, like, uh, uh, in this place, in this, in this room, there are a lot of people that believe that we can see the things in a different way. Maybe it was in, an, in another field the same feeling that Marconi had. And um, the theme for this year's uh, World Radio Day is We Are Diversity Radio. And the idea is that radio can be used to include people, to uh, allow people who would never normally have a voice to be heard. Uh, radio can help give a voice to people and different groups who never normally are seen or heard or paid attention to. So I think the launch of Outside Radio on this day of days is excellent. And so what we want to do right now is just a small thing. We want to get everyone at, back up from Outside Radio here. And um, Alyssa, do you, uh, what, what, do you have a tweet? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. We have one new tweet, and uh, someone from Outside Radio is going to say it. Thank you very much. I'm Jacopo from Outside Radio and from Twitter account of Brave New Radio. I read the, by 19.5 KCSU. Hello, Brave New Radio. K, uh, KCSU FM in Fort Collins, Colorado is streaming you live for World Radio Day, bright and early here in the States. Hope everyone had their coffee or tea. <laughs> um, okay, so what we want to do is um, can uh, get everyone up from outside radio, please. No, everyone yeah. up here. Come on, come on, guys. Everyone, come up. And uh, just to paint a picture right now, we're in this room full of uh, Marconi's inventions, uh, the various things yeah. he, uh, he worked on. And actually, there's a there's a, a big photo of Marconi looking yeah. over us right now. So um, course, what we want to do uh, is uh, what, what we want to do is we want to say um, all together uh, after the one, two, three, outside radio. Can we do that? Okay. And then um, do you have some? Okay, yeah. Well, let's do that first. So after three, one, two, three, outside radio. One, two, three, outside, outside radio. And uh, w this is true. We didn't have much room in our suitcases and our luggage, but we we. Alyssa would like to give you something on behalf of Brave New Radio. It's very small, but this is a token for us. For, for we have a little trophy to honor you guys. It says, um, congratulations for the launch of Outside Radio, February 13th, 2020, from Brave New Radio, WPU. Thank you. So congratulations, Outside Radio. This is the first of many uh, successful broadcasts for you. And actually, uh, you did an interview uh, with Electra Marconi, uh, which we can hear now, right? Outside Radio is a web radio that strays from the business perspective, and it was created by a circle of friends, high school classmates, who are doing to change things in order to be free to express themselves, to exchange experience, feelings, and passions, to be more inclusive and sharing. Giovanni is a special friend because during high school years he made us understand that the point of view could be countless and the people's growth is not simply marked by stereotypes yes, and standardized yes, yes, yes. More than everything, yeah, he taught the, us the, inside of every one of us there is a treasure. Thanks to him, his curiosity and his enthusiasm for life, we start outside radio. This idea started after his return from a meaningful experience in the USA at the William Patterson University in New Jersey. There, he experienced for the first time this new kind of language in the communication department, the one which accommodates Brave New Radio. This is a student's radio that represents to us a reference model and it honors us of its collaboration and partnership. We have been lucky to be Giovanni's classmate. We grew up together in school and we kept a strong friendship bond even after it finished. Joe is truly one of us. He's sensitive, full of empathy and friendly. He's a close friend of us who made us grow from a human point of view. Even his special needs never represented a limit, but instead gave us the possibility to look at the world with a completely different perspective. In sports, but in life too, being an outsider means to begin from an apparent situation of disadvantage to surprise, getting great results with an uncommon approach. This is the spirit which moves all of us and gives life to the outside radio project. <coughs> Thanks to this personal experience that we want to share, we give the opportunity to our listeners to get out of their comfort zone of stereotypes to observe the world with new eyes. 
The goal is to build a solid and strong structure and a rich radio program open to every point of view and new communication experiences. We want to thank especially the American friends of Brave New Radio, not only because they saw the birth of this new exciting radio adventure, but also they truly believed in Giovanni's potential and consequently in us as outsiders. We can guarantee to you that we will do all we can to repay your trust that honor us and represents great motivation for our work. Thank you very much indeed, and once again, congratulations to, ladies and gentlemen, the brand new Outside Radio. <laughs> so one of the assignments that Outside Radio had, I think was an excellent assignment, was to actually do an interview where, um, with Marconi's surviving daughter, Elettra Marconi. And they did that, and um, here it is for you right now. What is uh, your earliest memory of your father and also of his work in the radio, what kind of father was him? Well, I have wonderful souvenirs of my father. And at the beginning, when I was a child, that I was uh, learning to walk on board the yacht Elettra, I remember my father who was coming towards me and picking me up and uh, kissing me and being very, very sweet and always smiling and happy. <laughs> I remember his voice. He was dressed as a yacht man, always on board the yacht, the yacht Electra. And my mother was close to my father. She was in love with my father and both her. A great love. And they loved me, the three of us. We are we are very happy. I learned to love the sea, to understand uh, my father's work, uh, his inventions, and also the importance of saving so many people that were drowning in the sea that could ask for help, and also those that are in danger up in the mountains uh, and very difficult moments of their life that they can save themselves. You know, it's, it's wonderful to be my father's daughter. <laughs> when did you realize that your father had created such an important medium of communication? What does make you proud of being Marconi's daughter? Yeah, I grew up with it because my mother was always telling me that my father was doing great things and I had to disturb him because he was in the radio cabin and I was going, uh, when he was calling me, it was forbidden to go because he was doing very important things and then also I learned what she was doing because my mother was telling me and he started explaining me what she had done and what she was going to do. So I, I was always in contact with my father and uh, I also am a witness of his last invention because growing up I understood I could help him. Uh, he was asking me to help him. I felt also that I was my duty, but I felt also important, you see, because this, this was uh, something very useful. Oh, I loved my father, and he loved me. Do you have any special memory of your father's work in radio? What is it like having such a famous father? Well, he loved his work, and he was smiling when he was touching, you know, the radio set that he built himself. He was happy. He, he felt uh, uh, at home when he was in the radio station. And uh, uh, he was always uh, very sweet with me because he was happy also to have me close to him. And he was telling me about the uh, long waves and then short waves and microwaves because the last invention, he made them with a microwave, even more powerful than uh, the long waves. 
And then uh, his last invention, that I am a witness, is the parabolic antenna that the, the photographs, and I remember the, some discs that he was putting on Bobo Yotiletra, and also uh, he was making radio transmissions when we were out at sea with the coast, with the land. And then also he was telling me that in the future this would be developed and those are the satellites. The development of, the, of his inventions are the satellites and also the astronauts when they go in the shuttle. And I remember that when Captain Neil Armstrong met my mother and I, he said to my mother, if it wasn't for your husband, I would have never gone to the moon. <laughs> yes, I remember them, the three of them. I speak several times with uh, the astronauts when they are in the shuttle, when they pass by the Americans, the Italians, the Russians. Yes, <laughs> I love to be in touch with my father. How do you feel on the 125th anniversary of your father's first radio transmission? I feel very happy. I think that my father was young at the time, but he's still young, you know. His ideas, his energy, his enthusiasm. I feel my father very close to me. <laughs> I'm very happy. I am happy that you want to remember all this. Did you ask me this question? How do you feel about uh, its continuing legacy around the world, and how do you imagine its future? In the future of the radio will be always modern. <laughs> Up to date, we will always use uh, radio. And, uh, you know, when they can't look at television and they are in a place where you have to be in touch only wireless with radio. And so it will never pass <laughs> with the habit of listening to the radio. It is always new. And what I wanted to say is also that I am a witness of the radar when my father was inventing a radar on Bobo Yotelestra, that he was putting some sheets like it was fog. And then uh, with his instruments, giving the order uh, to the one who was at the stern to pass through two boys that he had put just the right size to get in with the Yotelestra. And that was marvelous. It was radar. Very important uh, to save people's lives and to avoid obstacles and so on. And then the last uh, invention has been that I uh, was present, the extraction of gold from the seawater. He found a way to pull up these threads of gold, and he was telling me to divide them, and I was helping him. And then we had to leave the Yotelestra, it was our home, because it was winter, and he said that he wanted to destroy his equipment and that uh, he would complete the invention um, season that he would be back on board the Yotelestra. And instead he died suddenly of heart attack. And uh, that was the end. Nobody knew how he could do it. And my mother and I couldn't explain the way that he had succeeded. And so it's still a mystery. How a radio is called an outside radio. Do you think that your father was an outsider anyway? No, this is something that I 
which I don't understand. Outsider means out of the field. He was inside radio, but they tried to stop him. You see? This is the real explanation. Everybody, I mean, also the professors and the, the normal people were saying that he was crazy. He was trying to discourage him, you see, to let go, not to continue. He said he went on without paying attention to anybody. He had a very, very strong willpower. And he had the right intuition, and he knew he would succeed. So this is the most wonderful thing about my father, the strength that he had. And also, he was a, a very spiritual. He was practical, but, but very spiritual, and uh, believed that he was a God believer. And he wanted to succeed also to save people's lives. Do you remember Mr. Adelmo Landini? Yes, I remember him. Absolutely wonderful. What an incredible success there for one of their first assignments outside radio just did an interview with Elettra Marconi. Congratulations to you for that. And actually, um, the outside radio team went, uh, because if you can imagine a picture here, we're in this Marconi house, uh, Villa Griffone and there's a hill behind, and the first successful wireless transmission experiment was this, was Marconi from a room upstairs with the window open, sending out the signal, and there was a farmer right at the top. Am I, am I, Alberto, is this correct? There was a farmer at the very top, yeah, 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 and absolutely. when he heard the bell, when he heard the signal, he then actually fired a, yeah, a, a gun. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So yes. the outside radio team went to that place, and they recorded this report. Thanks, Roberto. We are now on, on Celestini Road in Pontecchio Marconi, close to Bologna, and we are right behind the famous hill uh, where Guglielmo Marconi's first uh, experiment took place. Although it's winter in Boreal Hemisphere, today the weather is mild compared to the 13th of February 1895. The winter was one of the coldest on record in Europe during the 19th century. Celestini Road, just uh, off uh, to our left, uh, is uh, unpaved uh, and uh, we are uh, surrounded uh, by leafless uh, trees, uh, shrubs uh, and uh, brushwoods. To our right uh, we can see cultivated fields and there is uh, a small river. Here the smell is dry, we smell the plowed land mingling with wild musk. There is a sensation of calm, you don't hear any car noise uh, on the road uh, or on the highway. Just the birds singing and uh, the wind shaking the brushwoods. We are approximately 750 meters from Villa Griffoni, which on foot is more or less 10 minutes away. We can see the mansion from here anymore, but we can imagine that uh, 125 years ago, like today, you could hear the rifle shot clearly from this distance. Here, Marconi's assistant waited maybe a couple of minutes for the famous bell ring to shoot with the rifle singling the success of the experiment and the beginning of the radio. Back to you. And of course the important thing about this experiment, the reason why it was so uh, incredibly remarkable and unprecedented is that this was the first time that a transmission experiment had been a success, or that it was not in the line of sight. They could not see, they were not in the line, they were the other side of the hill. And this was a true breakthrough. This was the moment when suddenly, wow, what is now possible? All things are possible. Uh, congratulations to Outside Radio for doing that. Um, we do have some social media. Alyssa, do you have some social media? Yes, we got share? a ton of social media right now. Um, let's start with the Twitter feed. We have um, from Dr. C at Professor Tim, congrats Outside Radio and Brave New Radio on your World Radio Day feed at Radio Warner in Florida is playing your stream and stands with you to celebrate this day. Hashtag student radio, hashtag college radio. Uh, another one from Shia Dublin, OTR slash L at P PD and S. Brave New Radio, at Brave New Radio, sorry. Congrats, Brave New Radio. When we filled our application nearly 40 years ago, I don't think we ever considered an international remote. Keep, keep breaking ground, new grounds. 
So, ha so proud, happy International Radio Day. Uh, and there's more. Um, Rev 98 at Rev, eight, sorry, Rev 89 at Rev 89. KTSC FM is proud to be a part of World Radio Day, broadcasting from Colorado State University. Pueblo, we're currently streaming Brave New Radio in honor of this day. And there's, there's more. Um, Annabelle Polin <laughs> at Annabelle Polin. Annabelle Polin, this is, uh, this is the legendary Montclair State University, WMOC. Yep. Yes. Uh, happy 125 year anniversary of Marconi's first successful radio transmission at WMSC. The Morning Buzz has been checking in with our friends at Brave New Radio and, and, and at UNESCO, broadcasting from the Marconi Museum in Bologna, Italy. Uh, more, <laughs> one more, um, morning commute at Commute BNR. Happy hashtag World Radio Day. We're excited for our station, Brave New Radio, to be broadcasting live from the home of where radio began in Italy. Tune in to the nation's number one college radio station now. And they set up the link to our radio station's website. And we have a few more. Promise, this is the last of it. We have two more coming from students at Brave New Radio. We have one from Vont Leek. Vont Leek. Salute to BNR and salute to everyone in the industry today. Let's continue to be great and make radio the number one form of media for the next 100 years and then some. Sending my love from home. Wish I could be there to celebrate. And uh, Destiny Dupree, have fun and good luck with the, re with the broadcast. I wish I could be there, but, you know, hashtag coronavirus. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> so there you go, there's the first mention of the coronavirus. <laughs> we actually just got to, uh, one more tweet. Keep on coming. Uh, WXAV 88.3 FM. Chicago, right? Yeah, Chicago. Yeah, Chica I think Chicago, they didn't say. They says, um, what a great broadcast from our friends at Brave New Radio. Listen and they listen at and they have our live stream. Link. So, you know, this is a good time to actually hear some of the greetings that have been sent to us from around the world. You are listening to World Radio Day. A truly global celebration. And a very special broadcast from the Marconi Museum in Bologna, Italy. Hi, I'm Robert Rabin, General Manager of Radio Vieques here in Vieques, Puerto Rico. World Radio Day is a celebration of the importance and reach that radio has across countries and across barriers. Radio is a tool that gives people of diverse backgrounds an outlet to have their voices heard. Radio changes lives and radio brings people together. Over a century old, radio is essential to everyday life. Happy World Radio Day across the world. Saludos. Yo soy Roberto Rabin, gerente general de Radio Vieques aquí en la isla de Vieques, Puerto Rico. El Día Mundial de la Radio celebra la importancia y el alcance de la radio cruzando fronteras y barreras. La radio es una herramienta que da voz a personas de diversos sectores de la sociedad. La radio transforma vidas y une a la gente. Durante más de un siglo, la radio ha sido esencial para la vida cotidiana. Feliz Día Mundial de la Radio. Greetings from WUSC FM and HD1 Columbia, the only radio station found on the campus of the University of South Carolina. Happy World Radio Day. World Radio Day 2020 greetings from Goy, Ireland, where the first commercial wireless messages were transmitted and received from the Marconi Wireless Station. We are Flirt FM 101.3 and we are Diversity Radio. It's Mujje Flirt FM. Kid agus hien ponca tri. Agus tam mujje eksul oskutje er la daunda on radio. Hello and greetings from the Chicago area, everybody. My name is Nick Jacobs, the midday host and production director at WERV FM 95.9 The River in Aurora, Illinois. Radio is almost magical. Right. The ability to communicate over vast distances with no wires through thin air. And Marconi was the world's best magician. It's almost mind boggling to think of the extent and reach of Marconi's invention. The number of people that radio has touched is immeasurable from wars that were won. Descriptions of the world's most iconic moments disseminated to the public. To stories being told to families gathered in their living rooms. That was no Martian. It's Halloween. To the sounds of music moving people's souls. One, two, three, four. 
No other invention has had the reach and impact as radio has, as it continues to have. 125 years since the first radio broadcast, and it's still going strong. The magic is still alive. Happy World Radio Day. Hello from Brooks Radio. I'm Carl, Oxford Brooks University's official student radio station. Located in the world-class city of Oxford, we invite students from the UK and abroad to share their voice across campus. Hi, this is Dan Hurst from Kansas City, Missouri, deep in the heart of America. And what a pleasure to take a moment to honor the genius of Guglielmo Marconi and share in the celebration of World Radio Day 2020. Congratulations to the Marconi Foundation, to WPSC and Outside Radio for partnering to produce this historic broadcast. I spent a total of 30 years on the air in Kansas City, and I'm a witness to the fact that radio changed the world. Hello, salam alaikum, and buongiorno. This is Tom Green from Merge 104.8. We broadcast in English 24 hours a day from the capital city of Muscat in the beautiful, sunny Sultanate of Oman. It's a real pleasure to be able to send our greetings to you on this auspicious occasion and to celebrate World Radio Day with you at the very place where it all began 125 years ago. Here's to the future of this wonderful medium. And as we say around here, Masalama. You are listening to World Radio Day and a very special broadcast from the Marconi Museum in Bologna, Italy. That is right, World Radio Day. Sebastian here. And uh, now we're going to take it over. We're going to pass it over to Outside Radio. We have a student, a member from Outside Radio, Lorenzo Saltarella, who's yes. going to give us a little brief. Thank you. So, yes, we imagine uh, who, if uh, Marconi was uh, still alive and uh, was a guy just like us, and uh, we imagine to uh, do an interview with him. Welcome back. Here for you are Sara, Giovanni, and Jacopo for Outside Radio. Today we have the pleasure to interview Guglielmo Marconi, the inventor of the radio. Welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Today we are in the house where you grew up. 125 years ago, you noticed that there are thousands of uh, invisible waves where there is apparently nothing. Your discovery changed our life forever. Let's go back to the beginning. How would you describe your childhood and relationship with your parents? As a child, I was full of energy and very, very curious. At seven, I used to play with everything that I came across doing all sorts of experiments. And when I was 10, I built this electrical contraption in our yard, and I used my mother's very expensive dish set to keep it above the ground. As soon as I switched it on, all of the dishes fell into pieces, and my father was so angry that he ran into my room and threw in the garbage everything I had accumulated. Copper wires, metal pieces, various tools. My father Giuseppe did not share my love for science, unlike my mother, who bought everything back in the next few days. You have always been kind of an outsider, first with your father, then at university, where your ideas were rejected and you found it very hard to get sponsorship for your research. However, at 21, you managed to change the world. Mr. Marconi, how did you make it possible? I followed my dreams because I knew about the importance of their realization. You should never rely on what you already know. You need the courage to explore what is yet unknown. One of man's prerogative is progress. Have the courage to think differently. You should never surrender, even when they tell you to give up. Headmaster, did you think about my proposal? Marconi, you again! It's the fifth time you show up in my office. But I want answers. Marconi, I'm out of words. You are crazy. Who would ever listen to this nonsense? Get out of here now! Mr. Marconi, we know everything about you and your life. We know of your great determination and strong ambition. You never gave up. 
What we don't know is how do you feel carrying the burden of this change? It is not an easy question. I would not call it a burden, although my collaborators and I studied and worked very hard to achieve what we did. Many scholars before me tried to do that, writing theories without ever making them real. I owe them so much. At the same time, I understand the impact of what I did during the years, and I'm proud of myself. You should never feel satisfied. As I said, it's not a burden, but it's a responsibility. You need to feel the responsibility for what hasn't been done yet. A responsibility and a lot of merit as well. We all know the story of the Titanic, but probably few know that more than 700 people were saved thanks to your wireless telegraph. How did you feel when you realized that those people were saved thanks to you? Of course it had a very strong impact on me, since I was supposed to be on the Titanic myself. I think this story shows that, as I've said many times, my inventions serve to save humanity, not to destroy it. Although not everyone agrees with me. These tools of communication that today we call media are fundamental because by connecting people from all over the world we allow them to exchange knowledge, culture, to collaborate from distant people, to make it easier to share ideas and change the way people interact between them. As for those who disagree with the use of media today, how would you reply to them? I don't think the problem is in the media, but in the way people use them. Often you make mistakes that make you miss the point of using media, to communicate with everyone and everywhere, to know and to be informed about what happens far, far away can only make you richer and wiser, if you know how to use it properly. It's not all about communication. Thanks to your inventions, huge innovations have been done in various fields, from kitchens to surgery rooms, from transportation to banks. Everywhere, radio waves have revolutionized our world. Did you know it would go this far? Probably when I was growing up, I couldn't even dream of the latest practical ways you would use this technology in your everyday life. But I always saw potential and future possibilities in my project. Let's say I couldn't imagine the smartphone, but I could the mobile phone. Something so revolutionary could not but make a change in history. A change in our language too. The word marconist, which means someone who works with your radio communication technology, comes directly from your own last name. It's not very day they name a profession after someone. Of course not. As I said before, I always worked and started hard to achieve what I did, although I never believed I'd have gotten all this prestige. I feel honored, and I hope one day this technology will be even more useful, especially in transportation, so we can have a better security and communication system. If you could go back in time, what would you say to a young Marconi with so many unconventional ideas? To answer this question, I will bring you to a place that is very dear to me, my laboratory. You see, my long experience has taught me that you shouldn't believe in certain limitations that are based on purely theoretical and mathematical notions, which, as you know, are often based on notions that are imperfect. I've always thought that it's important to find new ways to do research, even when they don't seem very promising. To that young boy, I would say to try and experiment, to not rely only on what other people believe in, and to be very, very curious. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking with a great radio waves genius. Thank you. See you next time at Outside Radio. Fantastic. And uh, just to remind everyone, thank you for listening. You're listening to the historic World Radio event here at the Marconi Museum in Bologna, Italy. Uh, so right now we're going to talk to Lorenzo and uh, just get his, uh, his feelings about today. So Lorenzo, how are you feeling right now? Yeah, we are feeling great, all of us, not just me. 
and today is the perfect day. We have waited so long for this, and uh, today is finally happening, and so we, we are really excited about it, and we thank you again for giving us the opportunity to, uh, to have us here Absolutely. with you, and that's it. Of course. Is this, is this your first time on radio? Yeah, it's my actual, actually my first time. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I'm also a little bit nervous. Of course. I'm sure your heart's just boom, 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 yeah. a little yeah, crazy. Exactly. So how was it uh, putting these packages together? It was, it was fun, but it was also a work because uh, we are, it was our first time doing this. And right. It's, it's uh, really nice uh, to see our progress uh, that we make in this month of work and today is finally happening, so it's really nice. Yeah, for you guys to do this for the first time, really, uh, it sounded wonderful, it sounded really great. Uh, so just keep up the good work, and I'm sure you know this is the first of many broadcasts for Outside Radio. Yeah, we hope that. Absolutely, I, I believe it, and I'm sure you do too. Um, so is there anything you're looking forward to once you begin uh, broadcasting from outside? We're just looking forward to to take uh, our message uh, to all the people uh, who will uh, listen to us. Excellent. So here's to come. We're almost done with our second hour with one hour left to go. We find in radio time goes by very quickly. That it um, does. It does. It flies by. It here's what's going to come up in the final hour uh, very shortly. I have an interview. I had an interview with uh, Mirta Lorenzo, the head of media development at UNESCO, uh, because you know, UNESCO and the United Nations are behind World Radio Day. Uh, so I talked to her about, uh, I told her about what we're doing here today, and she's very excited about that. We talk about what does radio mean to the students who are involved with it, and we talk a little bit about World, um, uh, so, uh, World College Radio Day, that I'm involved with College Radio Day, and of course Brave New Radio here. And then we have our final set of greetings and a farewell from us here. So there's still a lot to come, including, as I said, this keynote interview with uh, Mirta Lorenzo from UNESCO. That's coming in a few minutes' time. So... Stay listening. You're listening to World Radio Day. And Alyssa, if people want to get involved and in engage with us via social media, how can they do that? You can tweet at Brave New Radio or you can Facebook us. Uh, just uh, write a message and um, just at Brave New Radio. And make sure to also like and subscribe because we post constantly and give you updates about our radio show and all of our radio shows that we have on Brave New Radio. So we shall be back in just a few moments. We celebrate the past. In the beginning was the music. Man invented a phonograph. Columbia Double Disc Record. Music on both sides. Radio. Radio. This man-made phenomenon which rivals the very processes of nature itself. Radio can make 170 people conscious of a thing. Rock and roll. The definite dance beat has been re-established for the kids. Radio. Radio. The stunning advances. Culture and health in space. It's one always reaching beyond provide information to people when it wasn't available before radio around the world it's time for live aid 16 hours of live music and aid of famine relief in africa radio imagining an even more remarkable 21st century radio you can stream it for your phone your laptop a way to listen to shows on demand radio we celebrate the future 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 Today, February 13th, live from the Marconi Museum, we celebrate World Radio Day, a global event and celebration of the importance and reach that radio has across countries and across barriers. Radio is a tool that gives people from many diverse backgrounds an outlet to have their voices heard. Radio changes lives, and radio brings people together. Over a century and a quarter old, radio is essential to everyday life. World Radio Day is an event organized by UNESCO for radio stations around the world. So happy World Radio Day, wherever you are. Welcome back to our three, our third and final hour of our very special World Radio Day broadcast live here from the house of Marconi Villa Griffon uh, outside of Bologna. And it's a beautiful day. We've been outside before. And actually, uh, if you ever come here, uh, outside is beautiful as well as what's going on inside with all the exhibits. And we had a demonstration this morning. Uh, Sebastian, do you remember here, that, what we didn't know, we were finding out that uh, the Marconi radio equipment was actually on the Titanic and can be credited with saving 700 lives uh, or, or so for the people who were on that ship. So even though we think of the Titanic disaster as being, t a lot of people did die, actually many people were saved because of the fact that they had Marconi's wireless technology 
in that ship. Right, in another ship as well. I'm forgetting the name of it, but, but uh, there was another event before the Titanic where it saved like 1,600 people. Right. And uh, so it's miraculous, you know, what, what this invention has done. So um, growing up in England, listening to the BBC and the radio then, you grew up in, where did you grow up in? America? I grew up in uh, Patterson, New Jersey. Patterson, New Jersey, yeah, right. listening to the radio there. Yes. Uh, we have, we come to work in radio, we are radio professionals. And uh, a former student of mine, when I was working uh, in Chicago at the university there, I um, had a student uh, called Peter Creighton, who was actually uh, very passionate. A student would come to me and say, uh, I really love radio, um, what should I do? And so I gave him a lot of advice, he now works in radio, in fact he's now running the station WXV in Chicago. And he said to me, he wanted to record a love letter, his love of radio, and so he's produced this uh, with the permission of Andrew Bird, the famous artist, Grammy-nominated artist, has donated the music today to be used for this. So this is his love letter. A love letter to radio, an audio essay. What does radio mean to me? Music. News. Sports. Connection. World Radio Day. A chercier. Community. Experimentation. Teatro da Menci. College. Antiquado. Everywhere. Without the birth of radio, we wouldn't be able to enjoy. Podcast. Cell phones. Wireless internet. Satellite radio. Seamless communication across the world. Superman wouldn't have flight. And the Martians wouldn't have invaded New Jersey. Present Orson Welles and the Mercury... We would have never known how comforting a fireside chat could be. That's the only thing we have to do. Or hear the beginning of the end of the Second World War. This is the invasion of Hitler's Europe. Because of radio, we know the difference between AM and FM. Why transistors are so important. And just how rebellious rock and roll is. Though some may view radio as old-fashioned, we see it as revolutionary. With that in mind, let's make this year's World Radio Day the biggest and best yet, as we come together to celebrate the 125th anniversary of Marconi's marvelous creation. These are <laughs> a love letter to radio, an audio essay written by Peter Creighton. Voices were provided by the staff of WXAV 88.3 FM in Chicago. Special thanks to Andrew Bird for the use of his song, Untitled Number no. 9, from the album Weather Systems, used with permission. Sound effects provided by SoundSnap.com. Sound designed by Peter Creighton. Thank you for listening, and happy World Radio Day. Thank you very much indeed to Peter Creighton at WXV Chicago and his students who made that piece. So this year, World Radio Day. It's nine, uh, the ninth World Radio Day that has happened. And the theme this year is We Are Diversity Radio. So uh, when I informed UNESCO of our plans, what we were doing here today, broadcasting from the Marconi Museum, and of course the launch of Outside Radio, they were very, very excited indeed. And so I present to you my interview with uh, Mirta Lorenzo, the head of media development at UNESCO. Mirta, thank you for your time today. World Radio Day happens every year on February 13th, so why is this world event so important? It is important because it is important for society as a whole to preserve free, independent and pluralistic media. And when it comes to pluralism, what we tend to think about is having uh, radio as well as TV, as well as uh, social media, as well as uh, newspapers, the press. That is, that uh, people will be able to seek and to give information through different means. Pluralistic media is important to have a variety of voices being heard in society and from the point of view of the radio stations that they will be able to provide inclusive, uh, diversified content. World Radio Day is just one event that UNESCO organizes. Where does it fit in with UNESCO's overall mission and what does UNESCO hope to achieve with this event? Because UNESCO in its constitution is the UN agency that uh, cares for the free flow of information and the, f and, and the freedom of expression. So uh, different member states have had the idea of proclaiming one day of the year as a radio day 
just to acknowledge the services that radio have has traditionally throughout the centuries given to humanity and also to foster more cooperation among broadcasters and to put accent on the importance of having access to information. The fact is that radio is still one of the most popular media, the one that is most accessible for, uh, I'm thinking of remote populations and people in hard-to-reach areas, and also across the world in countries where people do not often speak or are fluent in the official language. You know, we have countries in Africa and in Asia, even in Latin America, where there are different languages apart from the official one of French, English, Spanish. So radio has the possibility still today to give services, to give information in these uh, vernacular languages, even indigenous languages. And this is a service that uh, no other media is still capable of uh, offering. The same with the literacy level of the listeners. Radio reaches a very large population area or segments because they are able to broadcast or transmit information and even foster public debate irrespective of the literacy level of their listeners. So that's why when we think of uh, freedom of expression and uh, the free flow of information, we also have to care that different uh, media exist in all countries and that they are able to fulfill this uh, function of uh, servicing the public with information. And obviously, if there are emergencies, if there are disasters, if things happen in countries, uh, radio can literally save lives with the information that it broadcasts and it gives people. Yes, exactly. Radio has this uh, possibility that no other media has because of the way the other media work. For example, TV needs a whole team, needs cameras. So in the case of a flooding, it's uh, it's practically impossible to give uh, service to the listeners. Uh, instead, radio is usually the one that keeps on broadcasting even when the flood is up to the level, you know, the maximum level, and also the one that can bring breaking news immediately because you just send the reporter with a microphone. Um, floodings, but earthquakes and uh, many types of um, of different uh, emergency situations. Uh, radio also has the possibility of packing itself up, let's say, in a box and go on uh, broadcasting from a mountain if need be, or be changing geographical uh, areas or um, villages, let's say, depending on the natural hazard that has occurred. This is not possible with other media. And also, you know, people in those situations, usually the first thing they pick up is the transistor or the phone, if the phone has a battery, then, and, if, and if your phone has a radio enabled. Uh, but usually what people take is the little transistor when they are in these emergency situations and they have to run for their life. Right. So this year, the theme for World Radio Day is diversity. And the hashtag that you're using is We Are Diversity Radio. Mirta, can you explain how you chose this year's theme and what is it you really want to achieve by choosing that theme? Well, what we would like is for radio stations, but also people alike, to realize how diverse radio is and how radio reflects the diversity um, of society in the newsrooms and also on the airwaves and in terms of content. Uh, that is, many people do not know who is really behind the microphone. And, uh, and sometimes we have handicapped people, we have uh, blind people, we have people from different uh, backgrounds, origins, sexual orientation or age. And this is what is beautiful with radio, is that it's not so bound on image, you see, compared to other media. And this is crucial for creativity and also ensuring that we have people from different backgrounds and from different uh, origins uh, that 
makes or gives radio the possibility of having different stories, having the possibility of countering discrimination, for example, because they have this diversity on the, um, in the workforce, let's say. But also diversity, you can see it in radio when it comes to, to content, to programming, to topics. Radio reaches a wide audience in general, uh, globally, and can open up for a multitude of different spaces for democratic debate. And diversity can be shown in, in, in many ways, even if you have a culinary program, for example, on the, uh, I don't know, I'm inventing now, but on the different uh, dinners or food prepared by immigrant groups or by refugees, or, or you can have the diversity in the, in the choice of music in one program or in the choice of sports that are going to be covered. That is, radio really fosters tolerance, inclusion, and solidarity in many different ways. And we are so used to radio. You know, radio is like your, your friend, somebody that accompanies you throughout the day and throughout your life. And we are so used to it that we stop thinking about how diverse radio is and how the radio reflects the diversity in society. So this year, we are broadcasting from the uh, Guglielmo Marconi Museum in Bologna, Italy. So the university that I work at and the radio station at William Patterson University in New Jersey, we are going to the Marconi Museum and we are working with some students from Bologna who are students who work together in the school and um, a lot of these students actually are autistic. And so they are forming their own radio station. Actually, they're launching it on World Radio Day, and we're launching this station and doing this broadcast on the Marconi Museum, and they uh, call themselves Outside Radio, because for many of these uh, students who obviously yeah. do have autism, it's very difficult for them to find ways to communicate, and they found by actually doing radio, by, by broadcasting radio, some of them have actually found that they can communicate far more effectively and powerfully um, because of radio, and that it's actually allowing them to have a voice, and for them to be heard so so today with this broadcast we are launching a brand new radio station in Bologna for these students called Outside Radio. Congratulations, congratulations. What a nice uh, story and it's so uh, important that these things happen. This is also something that we want to, to do, that is to bring the attention of governments and all the ones who can provide an enabling environment for radio to flourish, um, how, how important it is that this group of uh, students with autism will have their own radio, as it is sometimes um, indigenous populations or also uh, people with other disabilities, that they will be able to, to access and express themselves and have their own radio station. This is really marvelous. I think Marconi would be proud. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. He didn't even imagine when he was filing for the patent for a system of wireless communication how actually he was going to change society. Because it's not just a question of technology. You see, the question is, it's, it's a, how can I say, it's a paradigm. It's, a, it, it's something that influences the way a society works and, and how information circulates. That's what Marconi changed. He, uh, he opened room for people hearing different angles, different languages, different sources, and probably he was concentrating, I would say, in the different um, technological things, in the antenna, in the apparatus he was going to use, in the telegraph and the signal company and all this, or the circuits. But but radio is um, is beyond this. It's it's mostly a, as UNESCO sees it. It's the creation of spaces for uh, inclusive dialogue. It's about creating spaces for getting voices heard across society. And we are actually broadcasting from the home of Marconi and the room, the the actual space where Marconi completed his first ever radio transmission in 1895. So this is the 125th anniversary of Marconi's first ever radio transmission, and we are in the room that he did that. So this is a very special occasion for us as well. It's a special day, yes, and it's so good that you celebrate it. Now, when it comes to radio, we, we can also mention that there are different milestones in radio, and 
you know, when UNESCO wanted to proclaim uh, World Radio Day, the countries had difficulties in agreeing which day of the year would be World Radio Day, because there are many countries who have different uh, people who have contributed to developing radio. For example, Russia had uh, Alexander Popov, France had Eugene Ducreté, there were uh, people in India, there were people in uh, in Spain, there was uh, Reginald Fessenden in the USA, uh, or Lee de Forest, who also contributed, and also Hans Brido from Germany. So there were so many people. But of course, Marconi is the one who opened uh, the way to all the others to contribute to the development of radio. And final question then, uh, Mirta, that is, obviously, radio has been around now for 125 years, the medium. What do you think is the future of radio? Is it a bright future, in your opinion? And um, what do you think the future is for World Radio Day? I assume that we will uh, continue to celebrate this every year. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, well, the future of radio, radio is the future. Let me turn this around. Because there had been this, um, this uh, idea that with the new technologies, radio would disappear. But actually, what has happened is that radio has appropriated itself of the new technologies and has used this to rebound in at different levels. So now radio is the radio on your transistor. Radio is a podcast. Radio is what is streamed. Uh, radio is on your tablet. And it's on D- DAB+, Plus, which uh, is the technology that allows actually to to have more stations being able to broadcast in the same area using less uh, frequency space, but also that offers the listener additional information and features, for example, I don't know, the display of the program or or the, the name of the song being played and so on. What I mean is that the technologies, the information and communication technologies have not killed or relegated radio to a secondary or tertiary place. On the contrary, radio has been the medium that has benefited from all this. And as for the future of World Radio Day, I think it's fantastic because at the beginning, uh, UNESCO and the international and regional broadcasting organizations, we were very much behind promoting the day. But it really already came up to a sustainable level uh, through which the radio stations actually celebrate themselves the day, even if, I think, if if we did nothing, they would still uh, celebrate. Um, And that's fantastic. Uh, Mirta Lorenzo, thank you very much indeed for your time, and happy World Radio Day. Thank you. Happy World Radio Day to you and to your listeners. Thank you very much indeed to Mirta Lorenzo for that uh, interview. Uh, Mirta works at UNESCO. And UNESCO, of course, today very busy because World Radio Day is a global event. Hundreds of radio stations. Although we thank them for, our, uh, for supporting our event and for giving us recognition and for promoting what we're doing here. It's quite an, an exciting uh, time here, uh, although we only have about 40 minutes left. And I'm looking at the producer, executive producer Carlo, who's been working very, very hard today, as indeed all of us have. But right now, before we continue, uh, we're going to go to social media. Any more uh, interactions, Alyssa? Yeah, we got a few more. Uh, our first one is from Denise at Denise Artistry. If you're not tuning into Brave New Radio Show in Italy right now, what are you doing? Good question to ask. Very good. Anything else? Uh, yeah, we have a few more. Sebastian, you want to read one? Uh, yeah, we got one from Blake. Uh, Blake, FSS Blake. He's been at the studio since 5.30 in the morning for World Radio Day, streaming uh, Brave New Radio broadcast live from Italy. Hashtag college radio that's what it's all about there you go yep Alyssa. yeah we have one from uh trayvon lee at the director brave new radio showing why we won so many awards and is now in italy so cool awesome Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay yes okay uh and then from uh Alyssa rose happy world college radio day uh to my brave new radio family and everyone especially the ones uh live broadcasting from the motherland from italy so she's uh from italy i'm forever grateful for the experiences and the friendships that she has made uh and will always cherish radio hashtag go brave very good now we're going to hear from uh, one of our students in just a second but before that uh we have been uh, enjoying our time in in uh, bologna very much and uh, uh, on our first night, I think it was Alyssa who said, 
We said, what do you want to do in your time here in the rich history and culture of Bologna? And she said, eat pizza. <laughs> so, that's what, so we went to eat pizza, and then uh, Sebastian was stunned uh, when he saw... Uh, what, what, what stunned you about the way in which Italians I, eat pizza? I was. I never knew this about uh, pizza in Italy, but uh, you eat it with a knife and fork. And I know in New York, that is like... That, 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 is, that is taboo, almost. You, don't eat pizza you do not eat it with a knife and no. fork. It slices. But here in the motherland of pizza, Italy, uh, you do eat it with a knife and fork. So the debate continues. I also discovered there's this thing called gelato. Wow. <laughs> this, just you discovered it? Had gelato, gelato before? This, gelato could bring about world peace. If we have enough gelato, give everyone <laughs> a bowl of gelato. It's all, all, all good. All good. Uh, so we're going to continue. So one of our students, Arthur Oakes, um, it's a bit of a remarkable story, but I'm going to let him tell it. I asked him, what does radio mean to you? And this is what he recorded. What does radio and Brave New Radio mean to me? Well, sit back and enjoy this audio adventure of my story. You see, my name is Arthur Ropes. I am a 21-year-old college student from the University of Wisconsin Stout who saw a dream in becoming a radio personality. But the story goes back further than that. In high school, I decided to write my senior paper about a celebrity. When I found out that radio personality Angela Yee from The Breakfast Club shares the same birthday as me, I was very intrigued with her career. Then I started learning about radio and how it allows you to have a connection with people. The impact that you can have on people with just your personality and your voice is what drew me in. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So fast forward to college at the University of Wisconsin Stout where radio wasn't on campus, but opportunity was. The professor who told me about college radio created an opportunity for me to learn about it. This led me to listen to Brave New Radio Show, Past the Ox on most Friday nights. This in turn helped me in manifesting that I would be a part of this great station someday. My excitement for wanting to be a part of this station brought me to the study of broad fair, which directed me to the study of broad office, which had the student exchange program. That program created an opportunity for me to be a part of this great station. So the question, what does radio and brave new radio mean to me? Well, being creative, having endless opportunity, and being passionate, all three things that I've learned being a part of Brave New Radio. Thank you indeed to, to Arthur for recording that. Now, it's not just our radio station, of course, that can uh, transform lives. Radio stations across the country in the USA, college radio stations, as well as where many students get their beginning. But radio stations uh, around the world... Um, obviously vitally important. The medium of radio itself, often we have heard that the medium of radio is dying or it is dead. Actually, it is alive and kicking, isn't it? Absolutely. It's transforming. You know, the radio has transformed. It went from AM to FM, and now podcasting has become a big deal, and we know a lot of podcasts uh, and, and, and students of podcast. Uh, so I think that that's like the new transformation for radio. I see a lot of students, specifically at William Patterson, because uh, that's from you know well, what I know, that are into podcasting, and that's what they want to do. They want to create their own uh, audio adventure, as what Arthur, Arthur said, through a podcast. Now, the other uh, th person we're going to play is a guy called Joe Riccatelli, who actually uh, was a former student of ours at William Patterson a long time ago, who went on to become head of RCA Records. Now, RCA was a company founded by David Sarnoff. Who was David Sarnoff for five points? David Sarnoff, anyone? I'm looking around the room here. Anyone know who David Sarnoff was? There's a hand up there. There we go, Barbara. Do you know? Sure. Do you want to come? To, can you come to the microphone? No, 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 no. No, that's no, okay. okay. She knows. Okay. So, so, I can tell you. So, so, so David Sarnoff uh, actually w worked very early on uh, for Marconi. Was employed by Marconi. Right. And he would end up going on to create RCA, the RCA company. That's right. And the set of companies that exist today. And Joe Riccatelli is now head uh, general manager of RCA Records, and he recorded this especially for us today. Hey, Rob. Hi to you and all my friends at World Radio Day. My name is Joe Riccatelli. I am the co-president of RCA Records based in New York. And on the anniversary of Guglielmo Marconi's 
invention of radio, I wanted to just share some thoughts with you. While radio was invented 125 years ago, I've actually spent the last 32 years promoting radio on music. And um, the reason why this is important to me is my life began, I really believe my life began at college radio back in the mid 80s at William Patterson College, which uh, led me down the road of being um, part of the executive team at WPSC, the voice of William Patterson College, and my internship that I ended up landing with Polygram Records was because of my experience uh, in college radio. Um, I'm a big believer that college radio plays a role in our world. It may not play the same role that it did in the mid 80s for bands like REM or Police or U2, but I do feel that it's still such a discovery tool um, for everyone across the country that spends the time to listen to college radio and, and NPR radio. It's a great um, way for us to expose and introduce new artists to the community. So I wanted to say thanks to all you guys out there for working so hard on College Radio Day, the way you have worked over the last few years. And thanks for supporting all of our artists here. And, you know, if you find something you're passionate about, like radio, stick with it. It's a, a great career, and, and it's a great way to live your life. Thanks, guys. That was Joe Riccitelli. Thank you very much, Joe. And actually... Um where you'll find our radio station as well as other college radio stations such as WMSC Montclair and of course WRSU Rutgers State University uh, and there are many more Monmouth and Fairleigh Dickinson WFDU we're all in in New Jersey uh, the state of New Jersey and so we reached out to the president of the New Jersey Broadcasting Association Paul Rotella and he wanted to send his message to us as well hello my name is Paul Rotella and I'm the president and CEO of the New Jersey Broadcasters Association on this World Radio Day, I'm proud to share the greetings and best wishes of all New Jersey radio broadcasters. You know, New Jersey is the most densely populated state in America, and radio is listened to every day by millions of people who live and work in the Garden State. Radio continues to be a vital medium of communication, and we celebrate its importance this World Radio Day 2020. I also want to congratulate WPSC, Brave New Radio, at William Patterson University for traveling to Italy in the Marconi Museum for this World Radio Day. We're proud of their efforts to celebrate the importance of radio and to represent the great state of New Jersey. This is Paul Rotella, okay, President and CEO of the NJBA, wishing best wishes to wherever you are listening from. Thank you very much indeed to Paul Rotella, a good man indeed, uh, for sending that along. So we're going to talk to you a little bit. Uh, we don't have much time now into the final 30 minutes. And uh, if you didn't know who we are, we, we'll sort of let you know. But um, we do come from a radio station called Brave New Radio. And um, Alyssa is in, involved in that station. And Sebastian is actually station manager. The story of Sebastian is that he was a student once um, <clears throat> at the radio station and he graduated. And he's so good, I just couldn't allow him to leave. He did leave for a little bit. He was working in the world of professional radio for one of the biggest names in radio. But when an opportunity came to hire him, I said, please come back. And I managed to bring him back to uh, the university. Uh, what, what does Brave New Radio mean to you, Sebastian? Uh, it has meant my life for the most part. Um, yes, when I was a student, I, I got involved with Brave New Radio in 2011. And, and I did not know anything about radio. I was never on radio. I never really experienced radio. I just listened to the radio every once in a while. Uh, but I didn't have like this, you know, this passion or this vision to be uh, a radio personality in any way. Uh, but then I got involved with the radio station and I started, you know, finding my voice. I was finding my personality and I realized, wow, this is it's such a beautiful thing, such a special feeling when you're in your own little world, in your studio, and you have a microphone in front of you and you can just close your eyes and kind of just speak about you know whatever it is that you're interested in so it's a music or sports or, or or news or anything um so yeah so i spent four years i got a, got very involved became news director uh creating news packages and recording the morning news and then eventually uh program director uh of, of the radio station and uh you know it was a great experience i met so many incredible people made lifelong friends at the radio station and i, I think that that to me was you know the, the most special part of it all is, is the connections that you make uh, with those people who have who are like-minded and who love this medium just as much as you do. Now, obviously, during that time, I'm, I have a fond memory. Uh, so in the, the United States, we do have these awards called the uh, IBS Awards, the Intercollegiate Broadcasting System Awards. These are awards for radio stations, college radio stations, uh, that go back over 80 years. 
So uh, I do remember a time, and I'm, I'm going to brag about you if, if you're not going to do yourself, <laughs> when Sebastian won probably the most competitive and most prestigious award of them all, which was? Yes, uh, 2015, I won uh, Best On-Air Personality in the Country. And uh, I couldn't believe it at first when they, when they mentioned my name. They said, uh, so the winner is someone who goes by the name of Seabass. I was like, <laughs> I was like well, well, that's me. That's my nickname. And uh, so, yeah, that, that was you know, a great moment. And uh, you know, I'm very proud and honored by that. And another person who's currently involved as a student right now is, of course, Alyssa. Alyssa, how did you come to get involved with Brave New Radio? And what do you do with Brave New Radio? What do you do at the station? Yeah, uh, right now I'm just an on-air DJ, and I record the news on Monday and Tuesday morning. Um, originally, I was also one of the students for the youth program. I did it when I think I was in middle school, maybe high school. I think I was in middle school. But um, I did it at first just because I knew that I wanted to be a recording engineer in music. And I knew that radio had, um, they had audio sound, they had soundboards. And I figured if they have soundboards in radio and they have soundboards in music, I wanted to get to know all the different types of soundboards. And I learned radio from that. And then once I got to college and I was a music major, and I never got into radio when I was a music major, but I switched my majors, like I said before, in broadcast and print. So I immediately just kind of did not enjoy being a music major when I was there. But, I mean, they have a great program at William Patterson for music. But when I switched to communications, I knew that radio was exactly what I wanted to do. And I felt like it, when I w was a music major, just because you have to spend so much time practicing your instrument, I didn't get a time to really be on air and be on the radio. And I enjoyed being on the air when I was in the youth program. So I figured... If I can't do what I, if I don't get to do what I enjoy, then there's no point in continuing with the music program. So I switched to broadcast and print, and now I'm on air every Monday this semester at 9 to 11. And now you're on the air in Italy. And in yeah. Italy. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing, of course, is that um, it was actually 10 years ago now that uh, the idea of, of College Radio Day came to my mind uh, as, a, as, a, as a day and event that would unite college radio stations across the country. The first one was in 2011. So we're going to have our 10th one this year. And, and the idea really kind of spread and uh, unintentionally went internationally because out of College Radio Day, College Radio Day came World College Radio Day. And so suddenly we found ourselves in a situation where we had um, hundreds, uh, 700 uh, college student radio stations around the world in 43 different countries now participating in this event. And it was a bit strange when you find yourself getting invited to the White House and did you ever come with us to the White House? I did not. I did not go to the White House, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but um, I took uh, twice been to the White House. and we, we were recognized by President Obama, and I interviewed Joe Biden. And then we had, uh, we had. I think I spent one morning. I spent the morning with Coldplay, and we spent time with the, the Lumineers. And it's really been uh, an amazing journey for us. Um, but we are all firm believers that college radio, student radio. Can, can transform lives. And I wonder whether uh, Alberto Lenzi is with us again. When you first came to visit us uh, in New Jersey Brave New Radio and you walked into the station, what were your thoughts? What did you think? That uh, was a, a, a fantastic place where a lot of guys with a beautiful face, <laughs> beautiful face because uh, they were so clever, they were so human, they were so. Uh, when you say human, you mean authentic, right? Yeah, authentic, real, yes. right, right. Yes, right, yes. Yeah. yes. Excuse yeah. me, me for my English, but the feeling was this, and very professional, very professional. And uh, for me, was well, that I'm not used to to enter in a radio station. I, I never been in a radio station. It was a, a very particular moment for me, and I forget it. Because uh, there was a lot of uh, friendship between them. Right. They were all together. They were speaking about uh, something to make a better thing. So it is uh, the thing that they should like to recreate here with uh, our outside radio. Mm -hmm. If uh, the feeling that we will have when we enter in the place of outside radio will be the same that they I had when I entered for the first time at the Brave New Radio. I think that I have 
I will reach my target. So you're, you're talking about essentially a place of community mm -hmm. where students feel that as if they're at home and that they, they feel as if they can belong and they can be safe. Yeah. And I think if you look at student radio stations, called radio stations, not just in America, but around the world, you are finding that this is a place where students can be themselves. And mm -hmm. I've looked into this. The question is, what is the benefit, what is the value of student radio? Is it important? And academic studies have been done that show that actually, yes, the participation producing radio helps students to discover their own self-identity, helps them to express themselves, helps them to discover who they are. And it's enormously important in terms of self-expression and discovering self-identity. So student radio, college radio, as we call it in the United States, is incredibly important. Incredibly important. And now, today is World Radio Day. We celebrate all radio. But the stepping stone, the first place that many students will go is student radio. And that's where they learn how to do this. And that's why, I mean, what, 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 Sebastian, what kind of skills did college radio give to you? I think it gave me the skills, uh, interpersonal skills, to know how to just be able to comfortably communicate with uh, with another person, uh, even people of different languages. It's you know, it's amazing. When I had the opportunity to translate for you in in Colombia, right? Uh, you know, people from all of, all across South America. Uh, that that was amazing. You know, people who who are, who are in radio for for ten, twenty, thirty years, and I was just a student. Uh, it gave me the ability to you know, to communicate and to express myself with them. Um, technical skills, you know, just, just learning how to work a radio board, le learning how to work a soundboard, you know, all these kind of things. Uh, uh, how to interview people, how to ask the proper questions when you're interviewing someone and how to continue making eye contact when you're uh, speaking to others. So it's these skills that maybe you don't learn in a classroom that you learn uh, when you're part of an organization like a college radio station. And final question before we have some more greetings is, Alberto, what do you hope the students, the youth who are involved with Outside Radio, what do you hope they will become? I, I wish for them to, to be the better man they, they can find watching to the mirror. Because I think that uh, uh, I, I, I'm proud to have seen them study, prepare for this moment. And the thing that was beautiful was that uh, they were all together, mm. helping one to the other, trying to, to express themselves in a better way, trying to produce some contents that were, could be perfect for you. They were a little bit shy because they say, oh, we are at the beginning, we are, we are uh, so young, <laughs> we are, you are newborn. Mm -hmm. so, uh, we are together with a, a big, important radio. And for this, they never give up. They try to do their best. And this uh, thing that is uh, what radio will uh, teach them. And uh, I think that the most important thing is that uh, you, cannot, you cannot win alone. It's important to be a team. And if it's possible, a team that love one each other. Excellent, well said. Thank you very much indeed. So we are going to hear from some more people, but before I play this, uh, when I was reaching out to um, people in radio around the world, I reached out to my former professor, my mentor, uh, Professor Tim Crook from the University of London Goldsmiths College, and um, he actually kicks off. He's the first voice that you'll hear in these greetings. You are listening to World Radio Day. A truly global celebration. And a very special broadcast from the Marconi Museum in Bologna, Italy. When we celebrate radio, as a historian, I wanted to retrieve the magic of the Marconi developed and invented medium that was experienced in times past. In London, I imagine schoolboys at my old school, Westminster City in Palace Street, near Buckingham Palace, who just after the Great War in 1918 they had their own radio station. They were certainly transmitting Morse. Perhaps they were experimenting with speech as well. The first radio stations in London were almost hyperlocal, one broadcasting from the roof of Selfridge's department store in Oxford Street. 2LO, which became the first BBC London station, started in Kingsway and then it moved appropriately to a building called Marconi House on the Aldwych and then to Savoy Hill, 
on the embankment by the River Thames, right next to the famous Savoy Hotel. In the 1920s, radio was pioneering, experimental and artistic. Early microphones would be set up in country woods in the hope that a cellist playing could stimulate the sound of a nightingale bird to sing. Magic, imagination, dreams, art, science and experimentation. I commend you all to all these things that have been and continue to be radio. Guglielmo Marconi invented radio 125 years ago today. To this day, radio continues to be the most adaptable technology in the marketplace and continues to fill the void for relevant and important community topics. Growing up in Argentina, radio was there as my loyal companion since I was a little kid. I would listen to the radio to find out if the ocean was safe, if I could go and swim. I would run home from high school to listen to my favorite radio show at 1 p.m., and I would fall asleep listening to my favorite radio program every single night. As general manager of WMSC-FM at Montclair State University and president of College Radio Day in the USA, I see students from diverse background, diverse points of view come together on air to breach that gap that we're seeing in the world today. So here's radio once again, providing a platform for people to come together and find a way to understand each other. From all of us at Montclair State University in New Jersey and myself, Annabella Poland, may radio continue to unite us and show us that we're more alike than different. College Broadcasters, Inc. takes pride in being a part of World Radio Day. I'm John Morris, president of CBI, and we celebrate the incredible history and the current impact of radio around the globe. It's hard to imagine a world without the music, news, sports, talk, and more that have defined radio. At CBI, we have seen thousands of college students learn this craft through the magic of college radio, many going on to the professional world of radio. We all have that moment that made radio special to us. Maybe it's a song that brings back memories, a talk show that makes us think in new ways, a new story that takes us to faraway places, or a special moment when our favorite team wins a big game. It's radio, and it's special to us in so many ways. We cherish the World Radio Days of the past, look forward to what they will bring in the future, but for now, we just celebrate. Happy World Radio Day from CBI. From the snow-capped Rocky Mountains, standing at 5,003 feet or 1,500 meters. To the powerful Cache River. 90.5 KCSU calls the front range of Colorado at Colorado State University home. We're wishing you a happy World Radio Day. Hey, what's up? I'm Angela Yee. And World Radio Day is a celebration of the importance and the reach that radio has across countries and across barriers. Radio is the one way that you can find news as soon as it breaks and also hear from some of your favorite personalities along with hearing some of your favorite music. That's what we do every morning. It's also great because a lot of people from diverse backgrounds get to have an outlet where they can express themselves and you can hear different viewpoints. Radio changes lives and also radio brings people together. Over a century old, radio is essential to everyday life. So happy World Radio Day across the world. Hashtag we are Diversity Radio. You are listening to World Radio Day and a very special broadcast from the Marconi Museum in Bologna, Italy. Happy World Radio Day from all of us at Radio Survivor. On our website and show, we look at the past, present, and future of radio. I'm Paul Reismanel, and I'm excited for podcasts to go global with every community and every interest, every country and every town having great audio podcasts to serve true community needs. Ah, my name is Eric Glein, and I'm excited that after a hundred years of radio history, we have so much to look back on to understand our world through the lens of radio and so much to look forward to to understand the future of our planet through understanding radio. And I'm Jennifer Waits, and I'm looking forward to hearing more adventurous programming on college radio and also learning more about the past 100 plus years of college radio. Like, like Eric, I'm excited about all of the archives and all of the things that 
have been created in the past and recognizing the contributions of students to radio. The past is brand new in radio. Hello there, this is Matthew Lassar, and I'm excited about sitting in my car and listening to playlists, house playlists, house music playlists that I've made in Spotify. And that's basically what I'm excited about. Here I am, 65 years old, and I'm listening to house music playlists on my long commutes on Spotify in my Honda Fit. So a happy World Radio Day 2020 from everybody at radiosurvivor.com. Ladies and gentlemen, the power of radio. We're going on the air. This is World Radio Day. Radio stations across the globe unite to celebrate the most powerful medium. Radio is like word of mouth. It very much influences whatever's going on. You are listening to World Radio Day. Un saluto da Radio 6023. Radio 6023. Buona giornata mondiale della radio a tutti da Davide Boris, Kino e tutta la redazione. Viva la radio! Long live the college radio! Happy World Radio Day from WLOY Loyola Radio, Loyola University Maryland's student-run radio station right here in Baltimore, Maryland. Find us online at WLOY.org. Special thanks to the Marconi Foundation. And happy World Radio Day from 103.3 WZND Fuse Radio. Hi, we are Usve Cube Radio from Venice, Italy. We are a place where students can express themselves and what they like most. You are listening to World Radio Day and a very special broadcast from the Marconi Museum in Bologna, Italy. And welcome back for what will be the final segment, the final time that we'll come to you. Uh, live here from the Marconi Museum, just outside of Bologna, Italy. Ladies and gentlemen, have you enjoyed the broadcast so far? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we're coming to the end. Uh, we want to thank everyone who participated. But before we come to the end, um, we're just going to talk a little bit to Alyssa and Sebastian. Do we have any more social media interaction that's come through for the final segment? We don't have too many more tweets or anything on Facebook, but we do have a bunch of people liking and retweeting um, all the different posts that people have sent in. Excellent. How's it looking out there for World Radio Day generally? Well, for World Radio Day, I have uh, some tweets from All India Radio News, and they say, Today is World Radio Day. The day is observed every year on the 13th of February to raise greater awareness among the public and the media of the importance of radio and to encourage decision makers to establish and provide access to information through radio Hashtag World Radio Day 2020. Another tweet from Badri. He says, World Radio Day 2020 marks a time where people around the world celebrate radio and how it shapes our lives. Radio informs, transforms, and unites us. It brings uh, people together and communities from all backgrounds to foster positive dialogue for change. Very, very good. So out there, there's a lot of, lot of things going on. Anything else? Uh, more people, hashtag broadcasting machine. Get ready to turn on your radio, but instead of jamming to your favorite tunes, maybe consider tuning into thought-provoking discussions and enlightening debate. After all, it is World Radio Day. It is indeed. Well, uh, that's very good. So World Radio Day, of course, is alive around the world. Hundreds of stations are participating. I want to thank UNESCO. Actually, we've got to thank a few people, if, if we may be, uh, be so bold, and I think this is an appropriate time. But first of all, um, we wouldn't be here... Uh, if it was not for really one person, um, where's Giovanni? He was just here. This guy is amazing. Give him a round of applause. Yes. We wouldn't be here without you. Because uh, the butterfly effect, right, Alberto? Yeah, sure. The butterfly effect means that his actions have reverberated now and have caused uh, all of this, right? Yeah, yeah. So we, we spoke about yesterday. Um, I never pay a lot of attention about butterfly effect but uh, now happen Giovanni went to William Patterson University there's a special guy spend some days to your radio we meet together we met together then we decided to, to share our different experiences and, and and start with uh, this new adventure. I'm coming from Bologna. William Marconi is coming from Bologna too. This is your and uh, we asked to them, why 
can we transmit from your house? And, and, and the, the foundation of the Guglielmo Marconi said yes. And now we have thousands of radio that are with us. This is a, a very special thing. I think that butterfly effect exists. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. And I think that we can go on by this moment. Well, I want to officially uh, thank Alberto Lenzi for his kindness. I would like to thank uh, the tireless work of our producer here, Carlo, who's been working all this afternoon. Thank you so much. Um, during my uh, interview of Mirta Lorenzo from the uh, uh, UNESCO, he said, can I just take a very quick break, like 10 minutes? So we allowed him to go and have a 10 minute break. Uh, you've been working very hard. I want to thank everyone who came here. Um, but before, for first of all, I want to thank, um, obviously, from William Patterson, Dr. Hel Dobler, our president, uh, Dean Moore, and Associate Dean uh, Loretta McLaughlin Vignier. I want to thank uh, Provost Dr. Powers, who allowed us to come and signed off on our trip to Italy. Uh, I want to thank, um, within the communication department that I work, uh, I want to thank... Um, Denise Dikoff and Helena Sir, who keep things running, keep things going, mm -hmm. so things don't fall apart. Uh, I want to thank Matt Crick, Dr. Matt Crick, who's uh, keeping things going. I'm the chair of the department. While I'm away, he's now in charge, and all the problems are his, okay? So he's keeping things going for that. Uh, I want to thank um, uh, Brian Gorski, who got up. Uh, what time did he get up, Greg, this morning? 4.30 a.m. in New Jersey to come and make sure this broadcast would happen in the USA. Uh, I want to thank Greg Madison and his uh, assistant, Ian. <laughs> that is some good. Yeah, very, very good. They've, they've come, they've been uh, filming this, uh, documenting this historic moment. Uh, I want to thank all the staff, faculty, and students of the communication department who have wished us well. It's, um, you know, in many ways, the world is a small place and we can connect, but it's also kind of a big deal when you get on a plane and you fly 3,400 miles. So it's a big deal. I want to thank Alyssa for coming because uh, you really haven't done that much travel, uh, yeah. but I think it's all been worthwhile now with the pizza and everything. It's all been worthwhile. <laughs> pizza uh, makes up for it, yeah. Makes up. <laughs> I want to thank um, my protege, Sebastian Escobar. It's absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank everybody who's come here today. Uh, where's Andrea? Uh, a, a great guy who's working, doing wonderful work with young people in the theatre and the community. He, he is changing lives every day. And absolutely. <laughs> yep, go ahead, yep. Uh, if you're done with the thank, okay. So I have a few people that I want to thank as well. Uh, to our student Bridget Charlton, because without her and, and establishing this connection, this probably would not have been possible. Absolutely. Uh, also to Iris DeMeo and Alma Diaz, who are in charge of the summer youth program at William Patterson University. Uh, without them, you know, uh, Giovanni wouldn't even have been at Brave right. New Radio. Absolutely. So thank you to the summer youth program as well. Absolutely. So uh, what we're going to do is this. We're almost out of time, but um, what we're going to do is this. We are going to ask the guys from Outside Radio to come up here one more time, please. So if you can please get up here. Giovanni, oh, please. Thank you. So again, we, we, we're in this uh, not massive room, but I think this is an appropriate time to do it. So what we're going to do right now is um, the guys from Outside Radio, they're, they're wearing um, their new sweatshirts that were given to them today. It says Outside Radio, all the same, how boring, which means if, um, if they are like other other radio stations, they could be boring, but they are very, very different. They are a new radio station. And so what we decided to do is uh, to commemorate this very special moment. And so even though you can't see this on radio, it's pretty special. It's going to be filmed, so obviously check out the social media. Uh, but what we decided to do was uh, give you each an engraved medal. And actually, uh, if you could present them to the, uh, to the guys. It's been... It's been a truly uh, remarkable, uh, remarkable. And please, uh, actually, if you can give them to everyone in this room. So oh, Alberto, thank please. You thank you very much. Thank you. Get, make sure everyone get. Make sure everyone puts it. And on this uh, medal, it's recognising, of course, the launch of Outside Radio and the 125th anniversary year. So we hope that you will. Uh, well, when you look at these, when you look at these medals, we hope that you will remember uh, this day, but also the the birth of your radio station and what you have achieved. And we wish you all the best in what you want to do. I just want to say one final thing. Uh, this today proves that radio uh, can change lives. Radio brings people together. Radio reaches across divisions. Radio can heal. 
Uh, radio can connect people with each other. Radio is important. So I wanted to, with that, I wanted to say thank you. And if you have any last words, now is the time. Oh, what can I say? I can say thank you. Every moment that we spent with you was a fantastic moment. And I think that all the guys never forget this moment. Thank you very much. Thank you, of course, obviously, thank to you. the Marconi Museum, who have been absolutely brilliant to host us today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. And uh, we're almost done. I just want to say, uh, if you've enjoyed this, um, we, we hope that uh, you understand and you grasp the importance of radio. And for myself, Rob Quick, and for Sebastian es Escobar, for Alyssa, for Greg, for Ian, uh, we want to say thank you. And does anyone else have any famous last words? Yes. Guido? This whole thing started in a restaurant in New Jersey called Amore Ristorante, uh, together with the Greek. So. Very, very good, indeed. So I think... My friends, we are going to conclude World Radio Day for here, for, for, from behalf of Italy. Is there a final shout out, Alyssa? We got, we got one more social media uh, coming from Johan at Heck of a Guy. Uh, at Brave New Radio, the history is so rich, we must understand this as well as learn from this in order to move forward in the future. I don't know where we would be as humans without that connection. Hashtag World Radio Day 2020. What a brilliant, brilliant thing to end on. <laughs> So, thank you for listening to World Radio Day, and we are signing off here from the Marconi Museum outside of Bologna, Italy. You are listening to World Radio Day from the Marconi Museum.